early lead over the Waukee Northwest Wolves. We'll move on to number four, Drake DeGroot. On a two-point conversion, a beautiful pass to Jaden McGregory for the two-point conversion to bring Valley within a couple under a possession. Good game over there. Take a look at the replay again. DeGroot obviously wasn't the starter to start the season, but he's working his way in. Beautiful pass, good high point placement, good catch by Jaden McGregory. We'll go to number three, back to Dowling. Sam Johnson, back to throw, and fires a dart downfield to Maverick Inman. And somehow, someway, Inman right there, right place, right time. A beautiful 34-yard touchdown pass. Take a look at it again. Johnson, good cannon, and kind of in between the corners. Good ball placement. Dowling would go on to win 31 to 17. Number two, not a touchdown, but still a great play. Beckett Baker on a screen play to Grant Gamble. And watch Grant Gamble turn into Reggie Bush. One guy missed, two guy missed. Take a look at the third juke move. And Grant Gamble uses his speed to get all the way down to about the 16 yard line. It's a 71 yard play. Take a look at it again. I mean, look at this move. Are you serious? What a play. Waukee wins 37-15. Our number one play of the week, Will Nuss and Johnston trailing Ankeny in the third, 9-0. Nuss checks down. How about another screen play? D'Angelo Barku turns on the burners, gets himself a set of goodbyes, and he is gone. <laughs> a long, long touchdown. 88 yards for the score. 9-7 would be the score after that. Ankeny would hang on. 16-10 would be the final score. Our honorable mention of the week, take a look at this. Early in the first quarter, still at about 18 seconds to go, Luke Anderson fires a lob over the middle. Look at the pass and catch by Devin Akers. A one-handed grab. Another beautiful play by Ankeny, and Devin Akers continues to shine as one of the top wide receivers in Class 5A. Some phenomenal plays from this week four of high school football here in the state of Iowa. It's time to jump now to our top ten rankings, courtesy of the Cedar Rapids Gazette. And no surprise, at the top of the rankings, Southeast Polk and Dowling Catholic. One, two, you could pretty much put them tied, if at any, in some of these polls. Bentendorf comes in at number three. The Bulldogs are still undefeated. Pleasant Valley at four. The Spartans lost to Bentendorf to start the season, but they have returned pretty well and are three and one now, a strong rushing attack. Waukee at number five. The Warriors, despite that loss to Waukee Northwest, they look pretty good and set to make a good playoff run. Ankeny Centennial drops a little bit after the Southeast Polk loss, but I still expect Centennial to jump right back into the top five, not before long. Cedar Rapids Kennedy in that prolific passing attack at number seven. Ankeny, after the win against Johnston, is back into the top ten at eight. Waukee Northwest slots in at number nine after the loss to Dallin Catholic. And Johnston, the Dragons, fall to tenth after their loss to Ankeny. That is your top 10 rankings, courtesy of the Cedar Rapids Gazette. We appreciate everyone for watching so far. Stick around. We'll be back after the break with much more. You're watching the CISN Football Pregame Show. Let's face it. It's Iowa, and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle, and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same-day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, West Side Auto Pros. It's the DeArmond Ford Indianola kickoff event. Score big on a new F-150 XLT with 3.9% for 66 months plus 37.50 rebate. Get charged up with a Mach-E and lease for $449 a month. All-Americans Ford Escape and Edge. New Edge for $3.99 a month flex buy. And the new Escape, 2.9% for 75 months plus $500 rebate. Join our winning team at DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmondFord.com. Hey, you two. We all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some weight. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snacks. Hi, 
Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Welcome back to the CISN Football Pregame Show. I'm your host, Blake Walker. On to the coach interview segment of tonight's pregame show. Paul Yeager had a chance to sit down with Coach Bazzetti and Coach Tyrone Tyler of Des Moines East to talk about their games tonight between the Jaguars and the Scarlets. Joining us now on the pregame show here on CISN is East Head Coach Tyrone Taylor. Coach, good to have you here. Hey. Uh, let, let's go through the week of practice. How's it been? Oh, we got rain day earlier this week, so we end up lifting and watching quite a bit of film. Um, then um, had a pretty good week. Obviously got outside, ran around a little bit, and tried to focus on, on Centennial. Boy, what a year for weather. First it's so hot, you have to alter practices. Then some rain actually falls. And how do you, how do you, how do you tur turn that into a teaching moment, using adversity uh, that can happen in any given moment? Um, I think for us, the name of the game is adversity, just dealing with all the different things um, and just to not worry about things you can't control. And so you just kind of pivot and roll with it and, and you'll make the best of the situation. Last week, Cedar Rapids Jefferson, a team uh, has kind of turned around and put some things together. What did you learn from that game about your team? Um, I learned that we're resilient. We're going to fight for four quarters. You know, the one thing when you go to you schedule those preseason games, you, th you look at schedules and obviously schedules from last year can be deceiving when you schedule a one or a zero win team and all of a sudden they're four and oh this year. But no, they're a solid team. They're definitely much improved. Do you have sides of the ball that have been progressing a little quicker, maybe offense or defense this year? Absolutely. Our offense has progressed. Um, you know, when you start off the year and you're getting guys going, um, our quarterback play, obviously, with our quarterback from last year transferring to Roosevelt, um, had a new guy at the helm. And, and so uh, that has transpired pretty good. And, you know, kids kind of picked up where they left off as far as the receivers. Second year for you. What has it meant for you as you go through this, uh, this schedule at this time of year and kind of check off in your mind where you thought the team would be? Um, you know, our culture is a heck of a lot better. You know, when we came in, that was one of our main goals was to change the culture and get kids to buy in, um, get less ineligibles, get more student athletes out. And that's what we've done. Um, and now it's just a matter of getting the football IQ and getting you know, the work ethic and those things up. And so uh, we're not there yet. It'll take a few years, but uh, we're slowly but surely getting better. We don't always mean to center on the quarterback, but we'll start at that position. How's the IQ been for Devin? It's been good. Devin's been solid. He spent the offseason out at D1. Um, it's kind of funny because we laughed. He was out there with Trent a little bit here and there. And so, no, he's done a phenomenal job stepping in and, um, you know, understands the game and understands the offense. Um, it, it's just one of those things that at that position, you can only hope you've got someone that gets it like he does. You have Clearwater and Hughes, guys that run the ball. Uh, what are you trying to do with them involving them in multiple aspects of the offense? Um, just getting them, getting them a couple creases. They've both got tremendous speed, and so getting them a crease to hit, and you know, getting positive yardage, and then getting them in the flow of the game. You know, it makes it tough when you're at second long with a bad snapper, those types of things, and you get behind the eight ball. So just getting them in the groove of the game. Last I checked, you can't coach speed, so you just have to utilize it as best you can, right? Absolutely, right. <laughs> Uh, finding them in spots. I mean, you've got matches tonight against a, a centennial defense. I know you're not going to give me the whole secret of where it is, but obviously there's spots that you can attack. What do you see as opportunities tonight uh, for whomever it might be? I mean, is there a certain aspect of this offense you like tonight? Um, you know, we do what we do. It's one of those things that, you know, we know what they run. We want to take advantage of it. Now, I'm a firm believer, and they've got to adjust to what we do. Now, are they going to be bigger? Are they going to be faster and stronger? Absolutely. But we like some matchups out there um, out wide. I've got tremendous speed at the receiver position. And so um, hopefully get some matchups out there we can take advantage of. 
I have to take a chance to see what, you know, I know you're not going to give me the game plan. I just have to ask a little bit. Uh, <laughs> right? Defensively, what do you like about this group? Um, you know, they fly around, they get to the ball. They're undersized, but there's, there's, you know, they don't give up. And that's something where some guys are playing out of position. Um, but it's something that just to get 11 guys out there that, that don't care how big they are, they're going to go, uh, they're going to limp around. They're going to basically just fight you for four quarters. Um, so yeah, and they're excited for the challenge. You know, they know they've got Trent, they know they've got, you know, the tight end out there and I've been focused on them all week. And so you know, those are their goals is to try to take those guys away. You're not the first coach to say that's been on the top of the list of who we got to watch, both Smith and Shuddy. Uh, Daniel Zio, Jamal Taylor, those are your guys who lead in tackles. How do they lead your defense? Um, they're vocal leaders and they lead by example. They've, you know, they've been starters for the last couple of years. Um, and so, you know, they're the heartbeat when they're playing well, they usually get guys riled up and, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, they don't, they're not always going to be big talkers, but they're going to, they're going to lead by example. Opportunity tonight is there. What do you tell your guys? Uh, yeah, records are one thing. This is a big game for you right here, right now. This is going to be one of the tougher teams you play all year. Mm -hmm. These guys have got to be excited. Yeah, absolutely. Like I tell them, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. And if that's the best team on our schedule, um, so to speak, you know, go challenge them. I don't care if it's homecoming. I don't care what our record is. Go um, let the chips fall where they may and, and have fun. You are familiar with Pizzetti's. You played it uh, at Dowling. You coached at Dowling Catholic. Sources tell me you and Ryan Pizzetti played against each other. What do you remember <laughs> about those matchups? It, you know, that was so long ago. Um, you know, when you're talking, that was Ankeny Hawks. There wasn't two of them back then. But, no, they've always been quality people from his dad on down to Ryan. And so it's something um, just to have that, that history there is pretty awesome. And it makes the world small. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, it's we're still in Des Moines, so and even though right. Ankeny's right next door. And and you've had those, uh, you talked uh, earlier in this week about the understand. you know Trenton Smith. You've worked with him. You've worked with Chase Shuddy. Understanding mm -hmm. there is a little bit of a, a respect among programs when you have guys that work out together in the off season. That, that to me, would I would imagine has been one of the biggest changes from when you and Coach Ryan and, and you played that's a little different today. Is that right? It is. Um, you know, the opportunity to work with tons of kids, you know, the rule of not being able to coach your kids after, you know, state championship, you take this downtime. And so getting hired by D1 and coaching in their Apex program and seeing Valley kids, seeing Dowling kids and seeing, you know, Panora. And then, of course, you find, you know, hey, I've got a, a tight end that wants to get individual work. You want to work with him? And then I'm like, sure. And then I go in and it's I'm like, he's on my schedule. What, what are we doing here? <laughs> But no, um, it was something, you know, I took it as a professional level, asked him what his weaknesses were, what he wanted to work on, and I'm going to treat him like anything else. For me, it's about developing kids and making them better athletes, and so that's what I was trying to do. And it's an opportunity to tell your guys, hey, you're really not that different than they are. I think right. we're going to compete. I, I think that's great to put it between the ears for them as well. Coach Tyrone Taylor, appreciate it. Uh, head coach at Des Moines East. Thank you, Coach. Not a problem. Thanks for having me. Back here on the pregame show, Paul Yeager with co-head coach Ryan Pizzetti. Coach, this week it's homecoming, so you have to, I guess I'll say it, deal with those distractions. How do you handle and embrace the traditions that a homecoming brings? You know what? It's all about our student body. It's about our team. It's, it's about our kids. It's about the fans. It's, you know, this school, believe it or not, has been in existence for 11 years now. And time does go fast, but it is a celebration for everybody involved. It's almost a generation of kids. You've already got, you know, you think of those first-year players that have come back. They have kids in the system now that are coming back to the game. So how do you embrace tradition, but yet you're still a new school? You know what? Uh, good question. You know, if you look on our sidelines every Friday night, we have former players. Uh, we get former players coaching with us. It is an uh, exciting time, uh, for sure, especially for the community. I know Ankeny celebrated their homecoming a year ago, or excuse me, last week, and then... Uh, we're going to celebrate ours this week. You have a game tonight against East uh, that comes after a tough game uh, at Southeast Polk. What did the Southeast Polk do for getting your players' attention for this week? Well, you know what? Every game's important. You know, obviously last week was, was, a, was a big game. It was a tough loss in the end, uh, losing by three. Uh, but our kids are ready. You know what? We're, we're, we're trying to heal up. We're trying to it face the, the middle part of our, our season and our schedule and, and staying healthy and staying crisp and, and doing the right things. That, that's the most important thing right now.
Let's put one more question about Southeast Polk. What stood out to you about their performance, your performance? You know, uh, we, we played well. There, there's at times that, that we stubbed our toe, and, and, and that, that happens in those big games. You know what? Uh, it goes back and forth. Uh, right there in the third quarter, I think it was, it, was, it was us taking momentum, and they took it right back from us. Then going into the fourth quarter, you know, we had momentum there at the end and, and just ran out of time. Let's discuss your offensive line. How have they progressed as these first four games have settled in? Oh, they, they've done great. You know what? At, at the beginning of the year, we, we knew we'd be young, we'd be youthful, uh, maybe a little bit inexperienced with, with the older guys. Uh, but they're coming together as a unit, which is exciting to see. Leadership-wise, who, who leads for you up there? You know what? I, I think we just got a collective group of leaders. You know, when we voted for captains this year, we had seven guys within – uh, five votes of each other, so so all of them earned that right. Um, so you know, when you look at that, I just think a team of collective leaders is, is would identify these kids. Max Snyder had an injury a couple of weeks ago. He returns. He comes back. Wide receiver core. You you mentioned J.J. Morgan earlier this week. Uh, Loss and Langford, those guys and Max. What have your receivers before we get to Chase Shetty have done for you? Oh, outstanding! They they stretch the field for us. Uh, they're very athletic. They they ran in the state track meet. They're multi sport athletes. And when you have kids like that with those intangibles, it's it's uh, it's a benefit for Trenton. For Trenton, um, he's a guy that you pride his stat every week to me about how his completion percentage is. What does that say about him? as a quarterback and a decision maker? Uh, he, just efficient. You know what? He, he needs to control the game as, as our quarterback. He, you know what? We, we huddle. You know what? Maybe we're a little old-fashioned like that, but so does North Dakota State and, and some other teams. So um, when, we look at, when we look at him as a quarterback, very efficient, uh, controls the ball well. Um, Eli Porter, uh, Braden Jackson uh, have carried a lot of your load for the running back position. Those two guys are... Similar but different. They're hard to defend. Why? You know what? They're they're both uh, they're both their own uh, running back. You know, when you look at uh, Braden, he's 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 more of a taller kid, uh, lean, just just very elusive, very smooth. I've heard that word describe him plenty of times. You look at you look at Eli. He's very explosive, uh, strong. Um, he's really found himself this year, uh, Coach. The East coach knows uh, Chase Shuddy and uh, Eli Porter, kind of worked with them in the offseason. He knows them. Uh, what is that about? Everybody knows now Chase Shuddy is a hard guy to defend. You sure like him, have him in your jersey, I'm guessing. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a big target, 6'4", uh, 6'5", uh, goes up and high points the ball really, really well, better than anybody that we've ever had. Uh, athletic, you know, he, you can see on the on the football field where he's a basketball player, mm -hmm. where he can use those skills, being a multi-sport athlete, and and uh, we just need to make sure we can get him the ball more. Defensively, uh, you've had some couple of injuries up on the line, rotate some guys through, but that's also been you've been able to build some depth. How has your depth worked into not making that a problem? You know, uh, our, our defense has really come together. They, they played well on Friday night. They, they played well the Friday night before against uh, Cedar Falls. You know, one thing about going against them during the course of the week, their team speed is, is, is very impressive. And it's, it's hard for us to do things against them. And, and as, as they get experience, because even though there might be some seniors out there, they're just inexperienced seniors. We get to the midpoint of the season. They're, they're starting to come together as a cohesive group. And uh, going forward, it's, it's going to be exciting to see what they can do. On the back end, linebackers, uh, secondary, you felt strong about them as well. You're funneling a lot of things through them. Anybody stand out to you that you want to mention? I just think the group and as a whole, they uh, they just play great. Every, every week, I think, from one to four, uh, you, you look at our kids, we're always pointing out somebody else that is making plays. Uh, tonight, what do you see as keys? We just got to get off to a good start. No, no question about it. Special teams, we need to clean up some things. Uh, defense, offense, we need to clean up some things. We just go out there and have a clean game and just put our kids in the right position to make plays. And have fun. And f have fun. Yeah. All right. The pregame show continues here. Kickoff coming up soon here on CISF. I want to take a chance and thank both head coaches for sitting down and chatting with us tonight before the big game. We always appreciate it every single week to get that access, if you will, before they get going on Friday night football. We'll take a break and be back with much more. You're watching the CISN Football Pregame Show.
face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are gonna get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, West Side Auto Pros. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. New trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's Truckload Kickoff Event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we've doubled the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The Truckload Kickoff Event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. When you need to conquer the drifts on your property, get the job done your way. The Western Defender Compact Snowplow. All the professional grade features in just the right size for your mid-sized pickup or SUV. Easy to attach and easy to use. Get the performance to plow like this and finish like this. Western. More jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck, this summer come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Super 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Welcome back to the CIS Football Pregame Show. I'm your host, Blake Walker. It's time to wrap things up before we get you out to your big game tonight on the Central Iowa Sports Network. We'll start with your games to watch tonight across CISN and across the state. we got six games for you. Waukee Northwest takes on Waterloo West. The Wolves trying to rebound after the loss to Dallas Catholic. Waterloo West is no slouch. Over 1,000 yards rushing on the ground. They're led by a two-junior backfield and Coach Lonnie Moore. Looks like he's got his boys ready. Should be a fun one between the Wallhawks and the Wolves. Anthony Centennial taking on Des Moines East. The Jaguars also trying to rebound after the loss to Southeast Polk. Then Valley take on Ames. And the Tigers get that first win of the year against a run-heavy Ames team. Another couple games to keep an eye on for. Cedar Rapids Jefferson takes on Cedar Rapids Washington. The Jayhawks are the best story in Class 5A this year. They're looking to move to 5-0 and on the season after not winning a single game since 2019. Waukee heads to Johnston. It's Johnston's homecoming. Look up at the fifth Waukee Warrior. And Muscatine turns their running back last week, Ty Ozad. They look to get back on track again after when last week and take on a 3 1 Davenport West squad. That has shown success in the recent year. That's your captains to watch. We hope you enjoy them as we get going here towards the Friday night football. Just minutes away from the big game. I'm Blake Walker. Thank you for watching this guy's football pregame show. Enjoy your football Friday. Welcome into Ankeny Stadium tonight's game. Ankeny Centennial, 2-2 oh, two two on the year. It's their homecoming game, taking on the 0-4 oh East High Scarlet Knights. Yes, this is not Paul Yeager. Hate to disappoint you. Tuning in for him, it's John Schaefer, former Local 5 anchor, and I'm joined tonight by Tim Halber. And Tim, another good one on tap. Beautiful night. Week 5 already. Here we are. 
Yes, we are. This is like a, it's kind of the, we're at the midpoint of the season already. You know, two exciting teams here. Uh, Aggie Centennial, big heartbreak loss from Southeast Polk last week, but two and two, ranked sixth, seventh in the state. So I think we're going to see some fireworks tonight from the Centennial Jaguars. Absolutely. And the East High is still looking for their first round of the year. Tough one against Cedar Rapids Jefferson last week. But second year head coach Tyrone Tyler really looking to kind of get a spark out of his team tonight. And it kind of what could be a trap game for Centennial. Yeah, looking ahead, Dowling's coming up with a game next week, so this is one of those danger games. Also, it's a homecoming game. Every coach's nightmare. They hate homecoming week. They worry about everything. These guys stay pretty focused. We've got a couple banged up guys in there, but I think if they get the offense starting right away, they're going to be okay. Absolutely. Of course, Centennial coming off that 24-21 loss last week to a very, very good Southeast Polk team. Some say the favorite, number one ranked team across the state right now. And so what do you look for out of the Jags tonight to kind of bounce back after that one? They have a really good balanced offense between passing and running. I think they're going to get out there, maybe start the passing game right away, get that running game going. It's usually two, three backs going at a time. So if the offense gets some rhythm right away, if they get up by one or two touchdowns, that defense really starts taking over, and it's going to be very hard to move the ball against them. Look for Trent Smith maybe getting a bit of a rhythm tonight, too. As a quarterback, he's had a great year so far, and that passing attack certainly been stellar. Yeah, 14 touchdown passes on the season. He's done a really good job. He's in that 60%, 70% completion range, so that's perfect for this Centennial offense. And, of course, two-headed monster in the backfield for them, too. That running game is going to get going early, too. I think so. You know, the track's perfect. We had a little bit of drizzle here early on. You know, but I think, you know, this, this turf here, those guys cut it. They are north and south runners, and they do quite well. On the other side, East High has to limit the mistakes, the turnovers tonight if they want any sniff of this one. Yes, interesting to see how the quarterback's got over 600 yards passing for the year. He's got six touchdowns in there, so I think see how they get get some rhythm. If they get behind the chains right away, they get some third longs, it's going to be a longer night. And, of course, East a little bit thinner than Centennial this year. A lot of guys playing both sides of the football for the Scarlets. How does that affect a player, in your opinion? Um, if the defense has to be out there a long time, I think you play defense a long time, you get tired. And then the turns around, you win your receivers, your running backs, or also your linebackers. Both very physical positions. It gets wore down. So if you don't have the depth in there, they miss a step. You know, it's easier to get a tackle on there. Yeah. Of course, East, again, 0-4 on the year. But Tyrone Tyler's done a great job trying to change this culture around. He talked about in the pregame show with Paul Yeager, really emphasizing keeping kids eligible first off, but also trying to instill some confidence in a young team. Yeah, it's a whole attitude he's got going on. The guys want to, want to play, play hard, so I think they do a great job. All righty, looking forward to bringing you this one. We'll have kickoff right after the break. Hey, you two. We all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some wins. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snacks. It's the DeArmond Ford Indianola kickoff event. Score big. Welcome back out to Ankeny Stadium here. Once again, Centennial and the East High Scarlets homecoming for the Jags. We have had kickoff. J.J. Morgan with a great return. Gets it out past the 35 for the Jaguars. Now trots Trenton Smith. Going to lead this offense for their first drive of the night starting at the 37 for the Jaguars. Smith under center to start things off. Two running backs in the backfield. And they'll hand it off right away. That is... Eli Porter on the big run, and he is off to the races untouched. He finds the pay dirt. That's a 63-yard touchdown run. What a run it was for the senior back. Makes it look simple. You know, you get the second running back through that left side of the offensive line, really sealed the block there, went up there, found the hole, cut it to the outside. He's got that track speed going to you and I for that. So Porter putting on a show, one carry, you know, 64 yards. Heck of a start for the Jaguars. They'll, they are on the board, and they'll try and cap it with the PAT from Ryan Bendezu setting up here for the Jags. And a quick strike just 17 seconds into this game. That is up, and it is good. 7-0 Jaguars lead. The first drive of this game, once again going 60, 
what was it, 60, 63 yards or so yep. for the touchdown. One play is all it took for the Jaguars, and now they'll kick it away to the East High Scarlet Knights after this. Quite the start. What impressed you most on that run? Um, I was trying to get the... <laughs> <laughs> it happened the so fast. Trying to get their defensive line out, who's all playing defensive line, because they have that 4-3 defense. Right. Go there, they put, the tackles are stagnant, the ends will flip around, so I was trying to get that set up, and I was like, boom, boom, block, second back through. So I don't know who was, who was playing fullback. It was Braden Jackson, or...? Might have. It was it was uh, J.J. Morgan from the looks of okay. it. J.J. Morgan there in the fullback, and... I saw it in warm-ups quite a bit, them running those two-back, three-back sets, and we know that's kind of a staple of the Pizzetti offense. Yep. So Ryan Bendezu will set up for the kickoff now for the Jaguars. Back to receive it will be Javarius Hughes for the Scarlet Knights, as well as Braden Johnson, two of their electric playmakers. And it's a bit of a squib kick, and that will find its way down to the five. Hughes looking for a seam, has a couple of blockers, but really nowhere to go. That's great swarm from the boys in the black uniforms. The Jags bring him down at the six-yard line, and that's where East High will start their offensive first drive of the evening. Cole Piper down there on the kickoff coverage. Had him by the jersey, pulled him down, did not let him get to the outside. Once that ball started skipping through, they had no recourse but to return the ball. Tough starting position down there on the the eight, seven yard line for Yeah, they'll start it off at the six here, and this will be our first look tonight at Devin Holman, the quarterback for the East High Scarlet Knights. He's a junior. Of course, they lost their starting quarterback from a year ago and transferred to Roosevelt, but Coach has been really happy with how Devin Holman's played so far this season. Cruz in the backfield for Holman. And then you've got Jamal Taylor right next to him. And it's a bad snap. They just got to get out of the end zone at this point. We are going to have our first safety, and that's two points for the defense for the Jags. They're going to mark him back at the one as forward progress was stopped there. It sure looked like he was tackled in the end zone, but they will now mark that just inside the one-yard line for the Scarlets here. Yeah, Bassett and Peeper in there really blew up that left side of the line, got there in the backfield. Of course, when the, the back was trying to get the ball, just barely got the nose out of the end zone, so rough start. Similar setup here. Holman in the backfield, kind of out of a pistol look. You got Cruz Rodriguez and Jamal Taylor once again in the backfield. They'll hand off to Rodriguez. He, once again, is stopped there. Did he get it out of the end zone? And they are going to mark him as a safety. Two points for the Jags defense. A great tackle there. That was Isaiah Bassett on the tackle, and he puts two points up for that defense, and it might be a track meet between the defense and the offense tonight <laughs> for scoring. Yeah, he got the handoff. It, he, even though that he fell out of the end zone, his knee came down inside the end zone. The line judge went up there, marked it down about a half yard short of the goal line, so... Uh, yeah, safety there. So quickly, nine points on the board for the Jags. Just three plays offensively or for the Scarlets there. Two plays offensively for the Scarlets. The fumble or the botch snap and then uh, could not get out of the end zone. And that's one of the points for Coach Ty Tyrone Tyler. He's really been trying to emphasize is that offensive line. They've had some struggles under center. And this defense is not going to make it any easier on them tonight. No, generally, Centennial, they bring the defense. So if you get behind the chains like that, you get deep in your own territory. And then what happens, your line starts, they close in their gaps. They don't let anybody through. The assignments are then when they come, you know, it's putting the ears back and coming at them. So that was a big uh, series for the defense, uh, playing quite well. So now then the now Jags get the, off, the, the ball back. It should get really good field position somewhere around the 40, 50-yard line. That's Christian Villanueva Morales setting up for the kickoff after the safety by the Centennial defense. Once again, 9 0, 10 47. We're less than five minutes into this game already, and here we are. We're going to get another kickoff. Short going to take it right about the 25 or so. That's Braden Jackson, and he gets stacked up. Just before the 50, looks like they'll start with the ball at the 48-yard line, and we'll get our second look tonight at the Jags' offense. 
And I'd assume we're going to have Trenton Smith. How long his night will go is uh, will be indicative of the score, I think, at the time. Right. There was uh, Bryce Dick, senior, wide receiver, defensive back on the, on the tackle there on the kickoff. So it brings the ball. But the ball is sitting at the 48-yard line of Centennial. You got Smith lining up in the shotgun. Braden Jackson off next to him. Three wide. See if they want to air it out or keep things on the ground. They will throw it. Smith finding one of his favorite targets there. Max Snyder down the sidelines. He's brought down after a pickup of about 16, 17 there. Nice little pitch and catch. Yeah, good timing out there. Pretty good cushion on the outside. A lot of respect for these receivers tonight. Rightly so for East. Yeah, I think their their key is to you know play that zone, that four three, four deep quarter zone. They're going to kind of keep the guys in front of them, not let like get get burnt deep. They're definitely going to keep their eyes at number ten, Chase Shuddy, the big tight end that plays out wide quite a bit. Of course, six eight, you can't teach that, right? <laughs> Smith will wind up out of the shotgun once again. Looks like we got Eli Porter in the backfield. They're going to run a little sweep with Braden Jackson. He's going to find a seam, try and weave his way through. Gets brought down at the twenty. Another nice pickup on the ground for the Jags. That's a first down. <laughs> Tackle Blaine Sandquist out there, forced his guy out. That created the big running lane there for, for Porter to run, and he basically pancaked his, his player there. <laughs> so uh, and, nice job by the senior. And tonight could be a night where we see a lot of Braden Jackson, the junior running back. Obviously want to keep guys healthy, getting ready for Dowling next week. But if this game does get a little bit out of hand, I'd expect threes and Three deep, at least, coming into play tonight. Smith in the shotgun. Once again, they'll fake the handoff. A little play action. Rolls out right, looking deep, and just a bit outside for his intended receiver there. That's Lawson Langford looking for the reception, but that is an incomplete pass. Yeah. Cruz Rodriguez on the rush there for the Scarlets. You know, coming to the outside, putting a little bit of pressure, causing uh, Trent Smith to throw on the run there. Didn't get his feet set to get the ball off, so good outside blitz by the linebacker there to get some some rush to get some pressure on the Centennial offense. Really like seeing, though, out of the Centennial offense, pushing the ball a little bit still, not, not holding up at all. Smith will line up in the shotgun. Again, next to him, here's we got Braden Jackson there in motion. They're going to hand it off this time to Eli Porter, and Porter's got another little seam before he's brought down. Picks up a few there, which is what you like to see, a nice group tackle by the East High Scarlets. Here for Vegas again, they're on the play. You know, linebacker playing, playing a good job. Looking at their keys, looking at the running backs, not getting fooled by some of that crossing that crossing backfield uh, play that Centennial likes to implement here. So this is the first third and long here for Centennial. See what kind of a play they draw up for them. It'll be third and eight. Smith again in the shotgun. They love to go shotgun here at Centennial. He's going to drop back straight pass, looking out wide. He finds Porter. Porter's got plenty of room, and he's going to try and cut it back for the end zone. Brought down at the four, but not before getting the first down. Good blocks on the outside tight end. Chase Shetty out there as a tight end. Kept the linebacker from going out. Braden Jackson downfield as well, getting a little block out there. Giving Porter some room to run down that sideline. Pick up eight plus yards. Pick up the first down and get into that first and goal. So uh, good, good outside blocking by these receivers. Receivers, it's great to catch the ball, but you want to have those blocking guys that create more running lanes. First and goal from the three. Again, in under center this time, it'll go Smith. He's got a couple of options there to play with in the back backfield, and we got a false start, it looks like, on the offense. See if we can catch a number on it. That's 64 with the false start. That's Ann Nguyen. Now they mention the linemen's numbers. Yeah, they always mention the name when they make a mistake. You know, they get those great blocks. So my job here is to make sure we get the love to the linemen during the game when they get the good blocks in, right? The big hog mollies, right? <laughs> yep. All right, so the five-yard penalty will be first and goal from the eight now. Smith under center once again. Go in motion there with Jackson. They're going to hand it off to Porter. Porter gets back to about the five. Again, East High doing a good job clogging up the middle. Yeah, they're doing a good job. I know Joe Foster in there playing some defensive tackle. He also is one of their starting offensive tackles. So, like we mentioned, a lot of these guys are playing two ways. So, yeah. they're fresh now, but you have know, the constant attack by this offensive line is, you know, they get quite physical and see how they hold up throughout the game. Also, keep an eye on seven for East. Cole Bueller, he's a, a DB, but he's a little bit of everywhere. Kind of an outside linebacker guy, too. He's been in on a couple tackles. Smith under center. They're on the six. 
Two options in the backfield. We go in motion there. Fake the handoff. Smith rolling out left. Going to look for a wide open. Graydon Jackson in the end zone. And that is a touchdown for the Jacks. Great pass play. Trent Smith rolling out to his left. It's not that natural. Got his shoulder squared. Should have won the back line of the end zone. He drew double coverage. Uh, Jackson's wide open underneath for the touchdown. He did the smart, smart call there. Look at the replay. Perfectly executed there. Smith just finds him. No one's covering him. Probably a little bit of miscommunication. But like you said, Shuddy in the back just draws so much attention being six foot eight. Extra point up and good. Ryan Bendezu there adding the PAT. And we have a 16 to nothing football game. 7.25 left to play in the first quarter. And right now all things firing for the Jaguars. Face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. We appreciate your support. And we're back getting ready for the kickoff as the Jags lead 16 to nothing over the Scarlets. Second drive of the night for the Jags taking just three minutes, 22 seconds. They go seven plays, 52 yards, and find the back of the end zone after the defensive safety. And that is all you need right now if you're the Jags. And as we get another kickoff, this one's going to go a bit deeper. See if East wants to field this one and let it play out. We've got Javarius Hughes there on the return. Gets decked there at the 23 by a gaggle of Jags. And that's quite the coverage, but a nice return from Hughes. Yep. Zach Howell came in. Put a little finishing touches out there on that on that tackle, which we didn't get any further downfield. So, better starting position for Des Moines East. Yeah, get off that six yard line, and maybe you can work with something here. They'll start at the 25 for this second drive. Of course, the first one once again just lasting all of two plays, and they went negative six yards for the safety. Holman back in the pistol. He's got two options: one to his left. That's going to be Jamal Taylor, and then, of course, right back behind him, he's got one of his favorite guys in Cruz Rodriguez, but Holman is wrapped up and flung to the ground for the sack. What a play there by the defense, Isaiah Bassett on the sack. Yeah, Bassett got in there, you know, got off his blocker right away, got in there. There was really no time for, for Holman to sit up there, get a pass play out. He did have a receiver out there in the flat on the left side, but just could not get to him. And yeah. Hard to pass when you're back middle. Absolutely, and that offensive line's going to have to do a little bit better job if you're east here to slow down the pass rush. Otherwise, it's going to be a long night for Devin Holman, who's, again, just a junior quarterback, first-year starter, has seen games or action in all four games. He's going to be in the shotgun here. Two running backs in the backfield. He's going to get a little help on protection. He's going to unload one. Nice pass there out left. He's going to find Jamal Taylor for a quick little pickup. They pick up seven. And they'll be operating with about a third and eight, third and nine. We do have an injury on the field. Player down for the Jags, and that would be Connor Welch, who is slow to get up. He'll hop over to the sidelines, but no timeout here as he does make it make his way back. Getting hit by his own player in the, in the dual tackle there, so Welch should come out. Senior safety. So we have a, a Dittmer here playing on the, the left corner. Coming in, he's another senior, some of the new defensive backs out there. Got a timeout by East. Of course, a little bit different look there for the Scarlets. Let's go ahead and head to break. We'll be right back after this. Face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. 
We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, west side auto pros. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. The bike. Coach Tyrone Taylor, Tyler trying to get things in order for his East High. Scarlets who trail 16 to nothing. 616 left in the first quarter here. Third and about seven for the Scarlets. They're going to go out of the shotgun once again. Devin Holman is going to send his running back out wide. He's got an outlet there, but he's looking. Pass is tipped. That's a great play by Jack Cahill for the Jags to tip that ball. Right, they came and had the three-man disguised with a three-man down uh, down lineman, but they blitzed two linebackers down there. We all, you know, some we'll talk about more tonight. You know, Carlos Blount, you know, the true freshman, <laughs> you know, middle like he's saying true freshman watching yeah. too much college football, but yeah, the freshman middle linebacker coming in very athletic on the blitz there, you know, putting a lot of pressure on. So we may see some of that disguised defense throughout the night. Christian Villanueva Morales back to punt for the night or for the Scarlets. I'm so used to Rutgers here. Jags bring a little bit of pressure, but that one's going to be fair caught and hauled in at the 46. That's Braden Jackson on the return. No return needed. Once again, the fair catch. So the Jags will set up shop at the 47 yard line with 6.05 left in the first quarter. So drive number three for the Jags here. You think you go to ground and pound or you let Trenton keep fine tuning a little bit as you still try and get ready for Dowling next week? I just assume the running game, get that tempo down, let the running game run over the, the clock go. So get that offensive line, you know, moving pretty good. Eli, or I'm sorry, that's JJ Morgan getting nearly wrapped up in the backfield, but breaks free from it, then gets chopped down. That's a heck of a play. From Dan Zo, Zio, I'm sorry, Dan Zio with the tackle there. That's a great tackle. Nice job by JJ Morgan though to break free. Yeah, he had, he had he broke a great tackle. There was a lot of outside room there. Closing speed by Daniel uh, Zio, he's only a five nine linebacker, but he plays. You know, you'll see him play receiver, tailback, middle linebacker. So he's very athletic. You know, pretty impact player, but good closing speed by him to make a tackle. Basically preventing that from being a, a huge gain, 10 to 20 yards. Smith in the shotgun once again. Got a couple of fullbacks up there. They're going to put Porter in motion. Quick little dump pass off to Snyder. Snyder going to work his way down the sidelines for a first down, and that'll move the chains. Snyder does a great job running routes, and he just he does a nice sharp cut, gets out on the sideline, you know, between the numbers and the sideline there, he kind of sits down there, giving a good target for Trenton Smith. Trenton back there delivering it on time, uh, picking up a first down. So they are mixing up the run and pass quite well. Guy that's been dinged up, I'm sure Smith happy to have him back in the lineup. Smith out of the shotgun once again, now on the opposing 38-yard line. And they're going to fake the sweep. He's under a little pressure, spins out of it. Don't give up on it if you're east, but he's looking deep as a man. We should see a flag there. We're going to get one coming out for defensive pass interference, most likely on Braden Johnson. Just got a little bit lost on it as Lawson Langford was looking to come back to that football. Yeah, he turned around. was underthrown a little bit, but then the, the defensive back didn't turn around, so they were going to call it every time that you know he's he's guarding there. So um, good escape by, by Trenton Smith. Once again, Rodriguez mentioned before on the blitz. Almost had him in the backfield. He spun out of it, went there. Pull of air underneath it through the end zone. So still 15-yard gain on the interference. Absolutely, and that moves the ball for a new set of downs as well for the Jaguars. We'll go out of shotgun here. Trent Smith waiting for the snap. A little bit of motion coming from Jackson. They'll hand it off inside. Eli Porter has a seam and picks up another first down before getting cut down in the secondary. Another nice run from the senior back. Yeah, good job there. Max Dickinson on the inside. Center Humphrey in there as well. You know, causing some good blocks. 
really sealing their guys, creating that lane and that gap and a good, good pickup on the, on the running game. Just a fine-tuned machine tonight for the Jags. They are now first and goal from the nine-yard line. Smith once again in the shotgun. He's going to drop the pass, looks for a quick hitter. Goes for the one-handed catch from Shuddy, but not quite on target. I don't mind the effort, though, from Shuddy trying to get the highlight reel. A little behind him back there, he, but he was definitely up there in the air trying to do a one-hand grab that using those basketball skills he has, like he's picking off the glass, which is a little bit to the outside, but good play call there. Well, when you're 6'8", you got this hands the size of Sasquatch. You can right. usually make those one-handed grabs. So second down and goal from the nine. Couple fullbacks there. You got Porter in the backfield for Smith. They're going to send Braden Jackson in motion, but hand it off to Porter on the misdirect. He tumbles into the end zone. The third touchdown of the night for the Jags. Another run up the gut from Porter. Yeah, some more good blocking up front there. You know, Kale Phelps is in there, also his offensive line, really sealing it up. You know, he just ran straight ahead north and south, taking in the end zone. And Zio can only do anything but try and chop down the tree trunks there. But it's just too, too little too late as Porter tumbles into the end zone. Bendezu going to try and add another to it, make it a 23 to nothing football game with 4.33 left in the first quarter. Bendezu delivers up, and it is good for the point after. Once again, a 23 to nothing ball game, 4.33 left in the first quarter. We'll be right back after the break. Face it, it's Iowa, and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same-day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. Iowans are working hard but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. We're back inside of Ankeny Stadium, a commanding lead for the Centennial Jaguars, 23 to nothing. That last drive going five plays, 53 yards, capped off by the Eli Porter nine yard touchdown tumble. So far tonight, Porter five rushes, 90 yards, Absolutely stellar, and that eating just a minute 32 off the clock. The Jags will once again kick it off, looking to pin East deep. The Scarlet's looking for a little bit of a pulse here right now early on, and this is one of those moments where if you're Coach Tyler, you don't want to see any heads down, you don't want to see any quitting your team. Right, you have to get some kind of, you know, they want to get a, that first first down, get something established in the offense, get some positive yardage on that first play there. Uh, would be helpful to the offense. We'll see if they want to come out and try to establish some run. Very tough defense to run against. I know that you know Ankeny is probably just peeling their ears back, like we're just going to knock these guys in the backfield. So seal some block. They have they do some trap plays on the inside. See if they get something on an inside trap. Pick up two three yards. Start moving the ball. See if they can get a first down here. So it'll be Taylor and Hughes in the backfield next to Holman. Devin Holman looking to create some spark here at quarterback. He's going to swing it out wide. Just nowhere to go there for Taylor as he's swarmed once again by a bundle of black jerseys. Great tackle out there. Looks like it was Anderson on the tackle. Anderson got up there. The, the receiver didn't make that block on that bubble screen out there. He broke through it, got there, and, and caused the, the five-yard loss. So good Good tackle, good effort by Anderson. If you're used to seeing Reed Anderson in a number eight jersey, he's 14 tonight. I guess the eight jersey is on back order to get back in and replace. So second down and about 14 for the Scarlets. Holman back to pass, just nowhere to go. He has to throw it away. Really not much of a chance there either if you're Cole Bueller because that's probably a best drop there. You're going to lose yardage if you catch that. Yeah, Greider coming from his defensive tackle position, taking the rush out there. They drop Zach Howe back in coverage. The defensive ends, they're really looking at you know flooding the, the underneath zone there. Greider coming in, putting pressure on home, and all he could do is rush out and throw something short out there. So, Third and 14 for the East Scarlets, and the Jaguars... Going to pin their ears back here on third down, most likely. A lot of room 
to gain. A lot of room to make up if you're east on this one. They're so going to get up to the line, that play clock ticking down. I think we're going to need a timeout here from Coach Tyler. And there you do have it. Coach Tyler just probably not getting that play in fast enough or at least communicated to the team on the field quick enough to get that one in. Yeah, hard to come up with. What's your, what's your third and 15 play, right? <laughs> yeah. Right now, who knows with the way this, this offensive line has just struggled tonight against a very strong pass rush. Yeah. The last time, Satina came out with the three-man defensive front, but they blitzed two linebackers. It looked like they had three defensive linemen again. They're going to mix it up. Are they going to blitz, not blitz? Are they just going to flood the underneath zone? Uh, if they get a good rush on there, you know, the way the passing game goes, they could pick this. I think they're looking at trying to get a turnover. So see what kind of defensive scheme that uh, uh, Taylor Anderson, the defensive coordinator, <laughs> same Anderson that's you know, related to the middle linebacker. Reed. See what he uh, he dials up here to, to maybe create a turnover because defense loves getting turnovers deep in their own territory. And we are starting to see that heavy rotation of the twos and maybe even a little bit of the threes coming in for, for the Jags. And this is one of those opportunities if you're Coach Pizzetti, you want to try and take advantage of, get some kids some snaps uh, early on this season because you never know when depth is going to come calling. Yeah, game time experience is game time experience. Valuable. Holman back in the shotgun once again. He's got Hughes next to him. They'll fake the handoff, a little play action. He's looking deep. On the pass, and he finds his man. What a pitch and catch. That is Brayton Johnson on the receiving end, and there's your first first down of the night for the East High Scarlets, and it's a big one. Big play. Uh, yeah, Holman had, Holman had just enough time. Even though the blitz came up the middle, Blount came up the middle. He, he stood back there, laid up there perfectly, dropped in his hands, pick up a big first down, get him out to nearly mid watch at the 43-yard line. So big play there by Scarlet. That, I guess there's your third and 15 play. Yeah, Brayton Johnson. Showing off the track speed there, and East has a new set of downs to work off of here. Two back, two in the backfield next to Holman, and he's going to drop back once again a quick little pitch and catch. That's Zio, and Zio's going to try to elude a couple of tacklers, but that's a nice job wrapping him up there on the outside by Cole Piper. Yeah, we'll see if they could give him forward progress there. Gains about three on the play. Always curious to see how the officials <laughs> award progress as I'm looking straight down the line here. Great view from up here in the press box of Ankeny Stadium. A beautiful night as the rain and storms have avoided us so far. Better knock on wood. Yeah. Tim on that one. We don't need any lightning delays this evening. Holman back in the shotgun. Looking out wide, getting things set. He'll drop back and looking for another quick hitter. Just sails one over. And that is Drake Dittmer on the INT, and he's got a wall leading him to the end zone. He finds the pay dirt. <laughs> Just gets burnt. One play comes around and finds the INT. Yep. Little high pass there that came to Zio. He, he had it tipped it up there. Dittmer was waiting for it, took it down the sideline. Got behind his big blockers there. He saw Zach Howe in front of him. He goes, I'll just run behind him. He created a block out in the end zone. So great pick six by Dittmer. Dittmer, Johnny on the spot there, catches at the 45, and he goes untouched for the house call. And now we have a 29 to nothing game, not even out of the first quarter yet, looking to make it 30 with a Bentazoo. Bentazoo, I'm sorry, PAT once again. He's been busy this evening as well. That leg might be a little sore come Saturday morning. Yeah. I think you'll be calling his name quite a bit tonight, so you'll, you'll get it right. But the last time, fourth quarter, we'll have a down pat. There we go. I like it. You got to forgive me. Paul Yeager always on top of these things. My first night out here at Centennial. I was out here for the homecoming game for Ankeny last week as a fan, Tim. And great crowd on hand that night. Another great crowd tonight for homecoming. Yeah, I think the weather scared him away, but then it's been filling up here right after he started kicking off and see the fans all lined up here. It's actually turned to be a beautiful night. You know, then the rain's going to stay away, seems like, most of the night. So I think they're enjoying homecoming. And I see the student section down here. Uh, construction vest. I guess I don't, I don't know what the theme is here, but uh, it's a very colorful student section. It's neon night. And I'm going to go. apologize to our producer because I think I was supposed to go to break there, but <laughs> he, he won't call me out too hard. I like to call myself out on those mistakes. And he can yell at me anytime he wants. 
Yeah, Neon Night, they didn't do the theme nights when I was in high school. It was mostly just show up in your school apparel and, and enjoy a Friday night out at Hutchins Stadium as a Roosevelt yeah. grad. So, I've, you know, as a player, I always was, I, I never saw a halftime show. I didn't know what was going on in the stands. So it's like, now it's, I can enjoy the festivities that go on below us. So. And once Great. again, we will get Ryan Bendezu to kick it off here deep and once again, East had some momentum going on that last drive before the interception. Just a, a rough pass. That ball not quite bounding into the end zone until late. Hughes had to double check it. And that's a dangerous spot to get into. Got to make sure that one carries. Almost checked up like one of uh, Paul Yeager's pitching wedges, right? <laughs> I, I joke with him about it. Yeah, so. he must be quite the golfer if his ball checks up like <laughs> that. Got to get out and find that out myself. But... Here we go. We'll see if East can try and counter back once again. They had a nice drive going there. The last drive out, five plays, had 26 yards of off that really big pass play over the top to Braden Johnson. We'll see if they try and go back into that that combo there for East. They had a little one-on-one on the outside, so they went there and used the speed to get up field. See if he wants to do something like that. That's where there's going to be open the outside. I think the middle of the field there that you know, if you get along the hash marks, there's a lot of coverage there by the Centennial defense. It's going to be very hard to get a pass snuck in there between the hash marks. He was next to Holman. Holman going to check. Now he's rolling out right. Nowhere to go with that pass. Just a little high and outside for Dan Zio. And that will bring us to a second and ten. Looked like Holman was looking for something to break a little bit sooner. And nothing was there and he started to roll out there. Bassett got off his block again, so he was looking to, you know, he has his eyes on the quarterback. So he had nothing left to do but to get something out there, at least throw it out of bounds, you know, live for another play. Really impressed, though, by the junior quarterback. Again, first-year starter, standing in the pocket well, doing a good job, trying to at least break down what he's seeing from that defense of the Jags. We'll see if he can convert here on a second and ten. Once again, you got Hughes in the backfield, a little bit of motion, Bobbled snap, and he has to just drop the, drop down to a to the ground and maybe gets a little roughed up there from Bassett. And Isaiah is saying, my bad guy. <laughs> yeah, it's hard because you don't have a lot of time with this defensive line. They're getting really good pressure on the quarterback, so you have to get a clean snap. And I think we mentioned earlier that they that moved some centers around there, so you're relying on that center to get the ball there, and it's all timing. Third and 13, it'll be for East. Once again, moving the wrong direction on this drive. If you're Coach Tyler, you try and draw something out of that last drive. Tell Holman, don't worry about it. Look, mistakes are going to happen. Keep pressing, keep pushing that ball downfield, and we'll see if they can convert here on the third and 13. He drops back, looking deep. Gets hit as he throws. That ball's tipped. It's Dittmer again, and Dittmer's going to be able to trot into the end zone for his second pick six in two drives. And this has gone completely Centennial's way in the first quarter. It's a mirror play that let happen last time. You know, Holman out there threw it out, you know, to Zio. Then he, once again, ball just a little bit high, but you can't, the receiver, don't tip it up because Dipper's sitting there perfectly right behind it. Pick it, take it in for another six. So big night for Dittmer tonight. Two pick sixes in the first quarter. 16 points if you're adding PATs for the defense this evening. And... That's quite a quite a showing. I'm sure Coach Ryan Pizzetti loves to see. I'm sure Jerry's happy too down there, but absolutely yeah. love to see that out of the defense. And the PAT's up and good for a 36 to nothing, 37 to nothing lead. 148 left to play in the first quarter. We'll head to break and be right back. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale.
New trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's truckload kickoff event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we've doubled the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The truckload kickoff event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. Ryan Bendezu setting up to kick it off once again, 37 to nothing. 148 left in the first quarter. Ankeny Centennial leading Des Moines East. And there goes the kick once again. Hughes back to return it at the one. He'll take it, see if he can find a seam. He just runs into one or two black shirts there. Didn't have a lot of help with the blocking on those lanes. He'll be brought down at the 15 yard line and that is where East will start with the football. See if they can bounce back, back-to-back -back interceptions. You really just look for, uh, if you're Coach Tyler, what do you tell your, your young quarterback here? Uh, settle down, you know, watch that, you know, throwing over the middle, try to get to the outside. Maybe, I'm surprised it took, they got away from the running game so quickly. Maybe see if they get something to the outside there. Keep that defense on it, because right now those linemen and those linebackers are just going into the backfield and causing chaos. You almost want to see like a halfback draw here, maybe drawing those those rushers to think it might be a run play and and maybe catch them a little too too deep in the in the backfield there. Or jet sweep, something yeah. like that, get some motion going in there, get those linemen moving laterally versus heading straight up field. They've got plenty of speed at East, I can tell you that much. Dan Zio's a fast kid. Obviously, we saw Braden Johnson's speed on display with that catch, pitch and catch down the sidelines too. And it looks like we're going to need a delay of game here from East. They just didn't have all their guys ready to go there. I'm not sure what happened. I'm sure if you're Coach Tyler, you're not happy to see a lineman coming in late there. Yeah, it looks like he's a backup li offensive lineman. Someone might get injured, so they had to rotate and didn't know he was in that rotation. So uh, they've got to figure it out now. But you don't want to go. They, they took the penalty. Yep. And they'll start now with a first and 15 from their own 10-yard line, 31 seconds left. And we do have a running clock currently with this game at 37 to nothing. Holman in the shotgun. See if they're going to try and draw him off sides. Can't get, quite get anybody to jump with it. That ball gets tipped at the line, and Holman just kind of throws his hands up there saying, what do we got to do, guys? Yeah, he was open out there. I think he just had to put a little more air underneath it. But the, the defense, if they're getting off their blocks right away in the backfield, no one's blocking on them, so they get to get up there, you know, quite a bit of height, stretch up, and, you know, get a tip pass. That'll wrap up the first quarter for us. 37 to nothing. Centennial leading Des Moines East. We'll be back after the break. Trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's truckload kickoff event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we've doubled the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The truckload kickoff event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. When you need to conquer the drifts on your property, get the job done your way. The Western Defender Compact Snowplow. All the professional grade features in just the right size for your mid-sized pickup or SUV. Easy to attach and easy to use. Get the performance to plow like this and finish like this. Western, more jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Thanks for joining us tonight on CISN. Of course, we've got a 37-0 football game. Centennial leading Des Moines East as we start the second quarter here. Quick run through on stats for Centennial. Eli Porter having himself a night. Five rushes, 90 yards, two touchdowns. Braden Jackson getting in the mix with a touchdown catch of his own. He has 16 rushing yards on one carry himself. Meanwhile, it's been a tough night sledding for East. Of course, Holm, Holman's thrown two pick sixes and back-to-back -back drives, trying to turn things around. Had a great connection with Braden Johnson. Johnson showing some track speed out there as well, but this defense for Centennial really just bringing plenty of heat, letting East know that they are not taking the Scarlets lightly. And the Scarlets break the huddle. It'll be Holman once again out of the shotgun. 
Body language still doesn't look terrible yet for East, as that's what you want to see if you're Coach Tyler. They're going to hand it off and go back to that running game up the middle. Cruz Rodriguez goes. He'll pick up a couple of yards and just sound right on cue for you, Tim. Yeah, that's a little, you know, get, keeps the, you know, the clock is moving. It gets a little bit of ground game. Gets the linemen get a little more tempo if you got a running game going on. So I think that's what they're looking at, trying to do. It was second and long, so at least get them out a little bit of the shadows of their own end zone. East now with a third and about 12 or 13, it looks like. Scoreboard says 15. They just got it swapped to 13 for us. So East trying to convert another third and long. Not in great territory either. Not a shot really where you want to go for it on fourth down from back here. But then again, you never know with Coach Tyler. And we're looking deep. we got a blown coverage. Just overthrows his man, Jamal Taylor. And that's one Holman wants back. Yeah, that was a, he put a little more mustard on it, but that was a good good out and up that they similar to what we saw here in the, in the first quarter. So that play's been there a couple times. I think you've got some new corners in there, some guys playing some different positions. So I think that out and up might be there later on. So, uh, But still... Give Holman some credit for standing back there and delivering a pass, you know, almost a, a big completion there to get a first down. Christian Villanueva Morales back to punt here. And Tim, a night like this, I mean, we're already halfway through the season, and if you're Centennial, you've got to be happy with how you're starting off district play tonight. Yeah, this is the first weekend of district play for a lot of teams, so this is, is a big factor in there. And, you know, they come in, they played quite a gauntlet of a schedule. Braden Jackson dancing through defenders, going to finally be wrapped up. Probably ran about 30 yards only to get about five on the return, but Jags will start about the 40. Yeah, if we had teleprompters up here, we could show you the <laughs> zigzag how he did that. I would say that at least 30 yards there on that return to gain six. He was looking for something just about everywhere he could go, just kept running into his own guys a little bit there too, but he's doing a nice job getting to the ball. Jags will start in opposing territory here at the 39 of East, and Trenton Smith does come back out for another drive to lead this offense. And you got Braden Jackson in the backfield with him. Likely fake the run. They're going to find Max Snyder out wide. Snyder's got some room to work, and nice job on the defensive side of things there by East High's. Braden Johnson does a nice job keeping the feet moving, chops them, and Squares him up, push, uses that sideline as, as a little bit of a helper there. Yeah, did a nice job there playing defensive back, you know, because you see Max Snyder is great to have him back in there. I saw the head on the right side, Shetty lined up a tight end, the rest of the formation off to the left. This is when he gets sneaky that he releases. They don't know where yep. he is, and he goes straight downfield because he's got some good speed for a tight end. So see if they want to use him on some play action. Smith has Porter in the backfield with him. Out of the shotgun they go. They'll hand it off. Porter looking to bounce it out wide right. He's got a little bit of room, but not a lot to work with. That was Bueller stepping in, but he breaks free. Shuffles around. Nice cut there before being brought down by East High. He thought Bueller had him in the backfield, but Porter just doing what he does. Yeah, Porter showing that he's hard to bring down. Yeah, Bueller was out there ahead of me. It stretched it out to the sideline, had cut him in. Not enough people coming in to help him, so he broke the tackle, took it up there, picked up another, uh, some positive yards there. So uh, Porter's a really good, balanced running back. Absolutely. First and goal from the nine. Similar situation to Porter's last touchdown run on the other side of the field. Smith in the shotgun has Porter next to him. They'll go in motion with J.J. Morgan. I think we're going to have a false start, though, on the Jags. That'll set them, set them back five yards or so. Yeah, we're a little eager to get it out through the left side. You know, you know, it usually takes a blocking back moving a little bit before the snap there. So they're going to catch that that motion. We see it quite often there with these jet sweeps and want to get to the out bunch of the outside quickly. So see if they come back with the same play or they want to go in the short side of the field. First and goal from the 14. The Jags in the huddle east waiting eagerly to see what the Jags come out of in formation here. It'll be Smith in the shotgun. He's got J.J. Morgan next to him there in the backfield. And he'll drop back to pass. He's got a wide open, couple of guys wide open. Looked like he had Porter wide open down the middle, but decides to go to the outside. Didn't quite catch a number on it. That's Max Snyder on the reception there, and a nice little pickup. Gains about three, four yards. Good delivery there. You know, a lot of the formation out there to the left side. Snyder's got he's got one on one little hook pattern in there. 
trying to break a tackle, but still got some positive yards just right there on the 10 yard straight. Would love to see Smith take that shot down the middle though with Porter uh, here or there, but they'll take the positive yards. We've got second and goal from just outside the 10. Jet sweep around with J.J. Morgan. Morgan gonna try and power his way. He finds the goal line and he's in for six. Yeah, Jamal Taylor on the tackle, but not quite enough. That forward momentum by Morgan take it in there. Picked up the last two yards basically on his own for the touchdown. To make it 43-0 Jags. 7.06 left in the second quarter. 43-0 as my good partner on the call just alluded to. And Ben DeZoo going to jump in to try and tack on another for the Jags. You said it, he'd be a busy man tonight. But as a kicker, I think you'll take it, right? When right. you're taking those ones and not the threes. And after the break, we'll come back. 44-0 football game. 7.06 again left in the first half of play between the Jags and the Scarlets. Hey, you two. We all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some weight. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snap. It's the DeArmond Ford Indianola kickoff event. Score big on a new F-150 XLT with 3.9% for 66 months plus $37.50 rebate. Get charged up with a Mach-E and lease for $4.49 a month. All Americans Ford Escape and Edge. New Edge for $3.99 a month flex buy. And the new Escape, 2.9% for 75 months plus $500 rebate. Join our winning team at DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmondFord.com. And we're back inside of Ankeny Stadium. The Jags leading the Scarlets 44 to nothing. Once again, 7.06 left in the first half of play. Bendezu back to kick this one off. And I'd imagine we start seeing some new faces on the defense here for the Jags to start this drive off. But first, it's going to be Hughes taking the kickoff. He's going to try and find a seam. Gets brought down. Great tackle out there. That was Al Clark, I'm sorry, on Alf Clark on the return there. That's my fault. One of my favorite names on the East High roster, though. I love that. Quick, easy, painless, and, and great football name, Alf Clark. Great tackle by Will Morris, you know, the sophomore. Backup quarterback linebacker on a great open field tackle. Once again, seeing some new faces out there for the Jags on the field and a good, good chance for Coach Pizzetti to get some experience for these guys, especially as the season does progress, it can wear on guys. And you start getting some injuries, and we're gonna doesn't mean they're not going to bring pressure because, once again, that's Cruz Rodriguez in the, getting met in the backfield. Maybe loses a yard, maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but... It's these depth, guy, depth guys that are going to make a difference when you start dropping or you get some nights where maybe guys are dinged up a little bit and you still need some, some output. Yeah, playing a half a game, you know, you know, on the field, live action going on does help you out quite a bit because later on in the season, like you said, you're going to be playing somebody, someone gets dinged up, you have to go and play a fourth quarter. You've got some game experience underneath you. You know, many, you know the more reps you get, the more the game slows down. Holman in the backfield. Hughes going to line up behind him. Kind of a pistol look here. You got Rodriguez there. Another bad snap, and Holman just has to hit the turf once again. A couple of those tonight. Not making life any easier on the junior QB. No, especially when you have to go down and you're dropping to a knee to get it. You're already, you're already down. So. so, homecoming night for Centennial. Once again, we alluded to the neon look. and I mean... For you, Tim, what was the look back in homecoming days for you? I got to ask. Let's see. You know, you're looking at 40-some years ago. It's <laughs> awful, awful hard. I think we were the kind of tail end of disco, you know, okay. looking at there. So who knows what. Love it. Who knows the kind of platform shoes, you know, stuff that we had going on. So, uh, yep. And you were out on the field most of those nights anyway, that's right. Yep. Holman under some pressure, eludes a tackler, tries to unload one just a little off target once again for Bueller. Would love to see him use his feet maybe a little bit there. Had some daylight in front of him, but nice job dodging the blitz and the pressure there from the Jags defensive front. Yeah, 
Of course, a busy weekend of football, not just here for Centennial, but Iowa State at home tomorrow, opening Big 12 play against Oklahoma State. You got the Iowa Hawkeyes on the road at a top 10 Penn State. Could be a rainy whiteout game tomorrow night for that one. And uh, Tim, you're going to be at the Iowa State game tomorrow too, if I recall. Yes, uh, going up early and uh, excited. I got some cousins in town, you know, that come to the game. We got a fake punt going on, and I love to see that. Christian Villanueva Morales, does he get enough for the first down, though? It looks like he'll be brought down short of the yard to gain, but still love to see the motor from the punter there. Almost had it. So that will flip the field. Jags will take over from the 24-yard line, but still nice job. I could tell if it's a straight-up, you know, fake, or if he just bobbled just enough that he just said, you know, if I do that, i got to go. He's Either way, he in. sold it greatly, did bobble it a bit, yeah. but you still love to see the effort. He didn't give up on the play and said, you know what, let's try and get it with the legs, and it's a big man to be brought down there. If he get, cuts it back up, maybe gets that extra yard, but now the Jags will take over. We've got a new quarterback in. It's going to be Chase Kluver in at quarterback for the Jags. Kluver out of the shotgun. I expect a heavy dose of running now. That's going to be Jeremiah Bassett on the rush. And he's going to pick up about 10 or so yards. Nice pick up there from Jeremiah Bassett, the junior back. Yeah, Cale Phelps in there blocking. Really found that guard tackle hole there. They've really done a fine job just blowing that wide open tonight. Chase Kluver obviously playing both sides of the ball there, too, for the Jags. Has the ability to as needed. Obviously not the starting quarterback, but should Trenton Smith need a, a breather ever? You know, Kluver looks, looks the part of a quarterback. They'll pass it here. Nice look. Just a little off target there for Max Snyder. Nice play defensively to break that up, but it looks like we do have a, an injury on the field, and he's high player staying down. And with that, we'll step away to break. Trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's Truckload Kickoff Event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we've doubled the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The Truckload Kickoff Event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. He injured Scarlett on that play. He would walk off under his own power, and that will take us back. A minute 59 left in the second quarter of play. You got Kluver in the backfield at quarterback. Bassett, his running back, and they'll run the fake jack sweep. It's Bassett again up the gut, and he's going to will his way into the end zone once again as the Jags have eclipsed 50 on the night. And we're not even at halftime yet. Jags up 50 to nothing with the PAT on its way. Good job of the offensive line. We've already seen a lot of these, you know, uh, softwares coming in there and looking at, uh, you know, Lichty's in there. we got Christian Lockdow in there. So a lot of we're seeing some of the softwares and juniors come in as linemen because you want to keep them, you know, too deep because if you ever need an extra lineman, you always want to have good lineman depth. Jeremiah Bassett getting met by a lot of applause and uh, cheers on the sidelines as Bendazoo sends it through the uprights, and it's a 51 to nothing football game, and we'll stay right here on it. Let's take a look around the rest of the scoreboards that we've seen around the state. Southeast Polk up on Sioux City East, 21-7. Johnston leading Waukee in the first quarter. 7-0 was the last check in the first quarter, and that should be a good one out there. Waukee much improved this year, and we saw how tough of a team Johnston can be as well last week. Yeah, Johnston's the real deal. They have the, the quarterback that can play there. They ran into a buzzsaw here, and they, get, they, they played here last. So, yeah, that's a game to, to watch. Even the Ankeny and... Going out east, we're seeing more eastern teams coming in there with the, re, the reshuffle. So Ankeny's playing Iowa City West tonight with a 7-0 lead. And Valley up on Ames 17-zip. 
Valley, a team that much needed win would for them as they've had their ups and downs, a really tough schedule to open the season for them. And then Northwest and Waterloo West tied at zero. Waterloo West, a team that's kind of been on people's radar as one to talk about, but still trying to figure out if they're the real deal. Coming up, they're three and one, and, and and some like AP had them tied for ninth in the state. You know, they're they're kind of in that that bubble there. You need to be in the top sixteen RPI because the RPI comes out after this week, after week five. So yep. that's going to be the determining factor. Top sixteen teams that make it into the playoffs. And here comes the kickoff after that touchdown by Bassett, and that one sails into the end zone for the touchback, 51 to nothing. Scarlets will start at their only 20 yard at their 20 yard line, first and ten. And once again, just trying to find some momentum here. If you are the Scarlets, Holman had some opportunities. I, I wouldn't be shocked if we saw a change of quarterback here either. But at the same time, you want to keep getting your junior QB some experience, Coach. Tyler sending his junior out there and once again he'll lead the huddle. Haven't seen him run a lot. I think uh, just to keep his, you know, as far as health, I wouldn't be surprised they try to run the ball here. They got time to run, get a three good running plays here. So you think they establish something in a, in a ground game against this uh, Centennial defense. Hughes in the backfield next to Holman. They'll hand it off to Hughes. Hughes looking to bounce it outside. Has a little bit of room, and he protects that football really nicely before being driven out of bounds. That's Del Wiesak on the tackle. Nice job using that boundary once again as a helper. Yeah, eight yards here on the uh, on the first carry. That's what they need to do now. See if they come back there, pick up two yards, get a first down, take something positive, you know, into this um, into halftime. Absolutely, you just have a minute 19 left, second and two. That clock ticking down under a minute 15, just 75 seconds left in this first half. Holman in the pistol, another rough snap. He's just gonna eat it there and again, not getting much help from his center, unfortunately. It's, that center position's a lot harder than, especially when you got a bull rush coming down your way like the Jags bring. Yeah, Jags, they, they put a person right on the the nose right on the center. So the center's doing line calls, looking there, trying to get the step, and then get that first block in there because as you concentrate on the snap, you tend to not get that first step out there to get a block, and that snap's coming out there, hitting the quarterback in the ankles. It's hard to recover. Got a timeout from East with 40 seconds left to play here, and we will stick with it. Now, Coach pozzetti has been around doing this, whether that be following his dad, watching what his dad did over the years, or, you know, co-heading it now with him, and... I mean, it's just been quite the legacy that we've seen from the Pizzetti family. Yeah, it's been a, it's been an honor to watch these guys. You know, the father son coach. That's, that's rarity that they get to get to coach together. Um, you know, that's a lot of knowledge between those two <laughs> two coaches there, looking at the, at the game plan. So and it's been a nice mix of how they're they're matching up the running and passing play. I know that's they keep saying that they're a running team, but looking at the stats, you know, they're really a 50-50 blend. Then they they do take their shots downfield very well. And a lot of uh, talent waiting in the wings too. When you look at the two deep, the three deep of this team, and as we've talked to a lot or talked about a lot tonight, getting these sophomores and maybe a, a high talent freshman in there, if if they're matching up properly, it's going to pay dividends. Not this year necessarily, but when those kids are juniors and seniors, they're going to have that big game experience. They know what it's like to go out there in the second quarter. They know what it's like to get out there and work up a sweat. They know what it's like to go in halftime and have been part of the game plan as they're going through instead of just watching it and, and through practice. So, yeah, these are all valuable minutes that they're getting here early on, middle part of the season. Holman back in the shotgun. He's got a couple running backs there paired next to him. He's going to drop back to pass. Looking deep outside, almost caught by Zio. It was a great ball. That's one he probably should have hauled in, but I like that they're still taking shots here. That's a great throw by Holman. It is, yes. He's got a nice arm. He gets it, he airs it out there. He gets, he finds the one on one, so we're, we're finding that out there. I thought Zio did, almost had a step on him, jumped up for it, just couldn't, you know, pull it in. So, um, seeing that, they like, like get out there outside the hash, you know, getting the, the receiver out of the numbers. That's been there. They'll probably go back to it again. I like seeing the, the, the running play that they had there. So, really, it's been the miscues have been, you know, a tip ball or. Bad snaps. Absolutely. It's quite a few yards. Well, that'll run the clock out on the first half. 51 to nothing. Centennial leading Des Moines East at half. It's been quite an entertaining one if you're a Jags fan. And East trying to take away some positives. And we'll be back after the break for the halftime show.
said, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are gonna get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. It's the DeArmond Ford Indianola kickoff event. Score big on a new F-150 XLT with 3.9% for 66 months plus $37.50 rebate. Get charged up with a Mach-E and lease for $4.49 a month. All Americans Ford Escape and Edge. New Edge for $3.99 a month flex buy. And the new Escape 2.9% for 75 months plus $500 rebate. Join our winning team at DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmondFord.com. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you, you got ripped off, didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Too, we all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some wins. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snacks. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. We are here at halftime on CISN. Paul Yeager along with Jessica Reinhardt, head volleyball coach at Ankeny Centennial. Coach, I, I have to admit this, uh, and I'm sure you feel the same way. What do you think of having like a week off around homecoming? How's that for reducing distractions for your girls? <laughs> it's great timing. Um, if we don't plan it, it's, you know, the conference whenever we get a bye week and our homecoming fluctuates. So the stars aligned. It's a good time for a week off to allow the girls to do their homecoming things and and us just to focus on practice. Well, how is a distraction for a volleyball team when it, you know, all that stuff gets, you know, kind of back time to Friday for football, but volleyball gets wrapped up in it too. They do. Um, and our girls have typically done a really good job of focusing on the thing they need to focus on. Um, but our school does hold an event called OTP on the Prowl. And it's really amazing, but it's physical. And we have had to play on the Tuesday after it multiple years. And despite our best efforts, it never looks that great because the girls are physically tired. So we are really happy not to deal with that. But you're allowing them to do it. I mean, they're still students and want to be a part of it. There's some coaches, I'm guessing, could just say no end of story. And then you look like the bad guy. Yes. And, you know, high school, it's all about experiences. We did have one group who the year before played so bad that they're like, we're not doing it. Like, we're going to go watch, but we want to be ready to play on Tuesday. So that's happened in the past, but we didn't even have to worry about it this year. This squad this year, um, it always seems to be you're always at the top of those rankings. And what has gelled with this group this year? This group is awesome. Um, I would say we're more athletic than we've been in the past. Um, we have a lot of people that do multi-sports, and I think that's kind of carried over. Um, what's gelled really well is a good combination of experience um, from last season, people that made it through to that semifinal round of state. I think that meant a lot. Um, in addition to, sorry, in addition um, to our seniors that are returning and excited to kind of carry the load and see what they can do in their senior season. 
I always like to put coaches on the spot. You got to start naming some names. Tell me who your senior leaders have been for you and the ones that you've been really excited about their play. Um, I mean, really all our seniors have done a great job. Anna Sash has undoubtedly led the way. Um, last year when we graduated our seniors, we said, who's going to lead this thing? Nana's like, me, me. And I was like, okay. Um, and she's, she's done a fantastic job. Um, but all our seniors across the board, uh, we have seven of them. Uh, they have found their way to contribute to what we're doing. Um, and they've really been awesome. And you already had senior night, I think I saw. So what was it like to have that out of the way? I mean, it's not out of the way, is it? But it, it, you ha you want to have that recognition and time to honor them and, and get them that experience. We do. Um, and it was fun. And we wanted to get them the W and we got them the W. Um, the only other home game we have left is Ankeny. And that one's always really emotional. So it was actually the seniors that asked that they do it on a night that wasn't the Ankeny night with all that hustle and bustle that goes with it. So it was good to just take a day, um, have a party afterwards and, and honor our seniors. I'm gonna get into that other town or that other school in a minute, but I wanna go now down the roster of your juniors. Uh, you have some key juniors that have been contributing and underclassmen. We do. Um, and the juniors all had playing experience last year at state, the ones that are contributing. So Delaney Miller, Jaden Pratt, mm -hmm. Um, in addition to Myla Butters, who played as a freshman, is now returning as a sophomore. Um, and we really just find that year of experience or a couple years of experience makes such a big difference. Um, and every year they come back and they're bigger and better and stronger and even more ready. So it's been neat to see. Well, Delaney Miller is, is a fun player to watch, but let's be real. Jaden Pratt is just everything. Anytime she's on that court, whether there's the net there or the basketball hoops, she's a special athlete, I, I, I would ascend. So how do you keep her both basketball there and volleyball here? How do you keep those two together with her? Um, she does a great job of doing it herself. Uh, we give her in the summers free reign, you know, Pursue what you need to pursue. Go to the camps that you need to go to. Be with basketball when you can. Be with us whenever you can. So um, she did a great job of balancing it herself. Um, but you're right. She is special. She's an animal. We've moved her to the outside so she could stay on the court all the time. Whereas last year she was in the middle. Um, and so she would come off because the libero plays for the middle. So it's been a good move to move her to the outside. It's a really hard thing to do as a player, but given the athlete that Jaden is, she's taken on that challenge and she's done a really great job. Yeah, she is um, a, a special to watch in, in everything. And it just seems so natural uh, from an outsider. And I know volleyball, when I see her hit, I won't, I don't want to be on the other side <laughs> of that. <laughs> No, I don't think a lot of people do. Occasionally in practice, someone gets tagged um, last year really hard. So yeah. um, it's not great to be on the receiving end of Jaden's swings. The rest of the season here, obviously your goal is to always to be playing on that last day of the year. How do you get there? How do you approach these last few weeks? Um, you still get there one game at a time, one step at a time. What's been really cool about this team is we have had a couple losses. They come to number one teams in the state, but they've always revealed something that we need to get better at. And this team doesn't get down. They're like, okay, this is a piece we need in order to be where we want at the end of the season. So it's been really cool to keep building. Um, we say we're actually grateful for our losses because in, you know, they show us something we need to know um, that we can get better at so that we're prepared when hopefully we're on that road to state. The, the state of volleyball in just the city of Ankeny is incredible right now. You have the Hawks, and let's not forget the Eagles as well as the Jaguars. What's it say about the community of volleyball in Ankeny? It's strong. It's awesome. Um, there's so much youth volleyball. We run our camps. There's clubs in town. These girls love it. They work hard. They play all the time. Um, and across the board in the city, you know, they have opportunities to watch these high school kids and, and dream big and be a part of it. So it's been cool growing up or living, I should say, in a volleyball community. My daughters play. They're passionate about it. Um, it's a cool place to live if you're a volleyball player or a little girl that aspires to play. 
and the state of volleyball in in itself as a whole let's go back a couple of weeks to what they did over in lincoln nebraska i mean that is just a fantastic thing for the sport if 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 someone had doubts about the place volleyball plays in a football state of nebraska but we also know volleyball is huge there too what was it like to see that event unfold yeah it was amazing it was historical um it was i had the team over um to watch it <laughs> we went to nebraska camp and we had nebraska's libero lexi um, as one of our coaches. And so we decided on that night we were going to get together and watch her. But um, yeah, I mean, it was great for the sport of volleyball. It's great for women. Looks like it's going to carry over maybe to basketball, you know, the Hawkeye Stadium coming up. Mm -hmm. So all of these things are positive um, things for women in sports. Well, and, and exactly. And I guess uh, when you talk about Centennial, I think a lot of, I mean, yes, softball went and won a state title. But I think they a lot of people think Centennial is a volleyball school first. Does that uh, make you smile? <laughs> uh, sure, we'll take it. Um, I think we're all really proud of the girls' sports on Centennial's side. Um, all of our coaches work really close and well together, um, and we love the success for all of them because we do have people on all these teams. So if all the women's sports at Centennial can keep winning, we'll take it. And you just like to be in the middle of it all, and you have your pulse on it all. And you are a very busy person, Coach. It's always hard to pin you down, and I thank you for making time. Thank you. All right, that's uh, head volleyball coach at Centennial. That's Jessica Reinhardt, everybody. Next match is next week, right? Yeah, Tuesday against Johnston. Yeah, if you want to go see him, head over there to Johnston Gym. All right, we're uh, going to continue with our pregame show here on CISN. Western lets your UTV power through the storm. The Impact V-Plow and Impact Straight Blade. With the features the pros demand. Custom tailored for your UTV. And to keep your work top notch, rely on the Tornado UTV Hopper Spreader. Now that's a job well done. Western, more jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. New trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's Truckload Kickoff Event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we double the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The Truckload Kickoff Event. Buy new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. Welcome back into Ankeny Stadium. 51 to nothing. Centennial leading Des Moines East. I'm John Schaefer joined by Tim Halber tonight. And Tim, it was quite the first half for the Jags. <laughs> that, that it was. <laughs> there on this, the north end of the field, you know, the whole the whole first quarter, we saw two pick six by the same player coming in there. Uh, very first play. First off, it's a play for the Jags. 64-yard touchdown run. Uh, and they haven't looked back since. Absolutely. Eli Porter. Going off in that first half, six carries, 105 yards. In total for that first half, Centennial had 159 yards rushing, 66 through the air. Trenton Smith not having to do a ton, but when he did, he looked sharp as well. Yeah, he's been on there. I think he's been really hitting his targets. He's kind of spraying the ball around quite a bit. So um, he looks comfortable back there. He hasn't had, he's not scrambling a lot. Even when he has scrambled, He's been able to still hit his open receivers, get a couple touchdowns. Good to see Max Snyder back in the mix as well, dealing with some injuries earlier this season, but a guy that Trenton Smith was going back to quite a bit. 
Yeah, get him back in the groove again. I don't. I don't think we have. You know, Shuddy has not caught a caught a pass. Has only thrown to him like you know once. So I think looking at you know, spreading the ball out, you know, and using everybody on the offense that balanced offensive attack. You're looking at you know nine passes, eleven rushes. You know they've done a lot with those few offensive plays. On the other side of the ball, East has had a couple bright spots. You had the great pass out to Braden Johnson from uh, Devin Holman there, but the young quarterback, the junior quarterback for East, uh, having a little bit of touch problems, and that led to a couple pick sixes. As you mentioned, it was Dittmer on both of those in the first quarter. And really, if you're, what do you say to junior quarterback, again, first-year starter for East when you're coming out of a half like that? You know, forget it. You know, this is a really good team. They're they're a playoff bound team. Like, you know, what did you learn from that first half? What did you see out there? Slow the game down. See, pick up on the positives. He had some really nice touches to the outside routes there. Um, the Helios throws are pretty accurate. Hit the receivers in the hands at yep. the two pick sixes. So really, he's doing some good things. Work on that center quarterback exchange. It's probably cost him twenty some yards there. So. What do you take out that you can learn from the positives and build on those this second half? It's going to go pretty fast, but just get that game experience, settle down, and learn from the second half. Absolutely, and if you're East, I think you come out, try and run the ball a little bit. They had a little bit of success there at the very end of the half. Hughes had a tough run along the sidelines, and then they almost connect with Zio, and that could have been a big game too. Yeah, look for it. don't look for the big gains. You can't get 51 points in one series, so I go out there and Try to get a couple first downs, move the ball a little bit, see what that feels like, because you're going to see a lot of younger players in for this attendant defense. Can you go about against some of those sophomores and juniors out there and then even some things up and make some plays, let your starters kind of see some successes. Try and build on that culture, too, that Coach Tyler's trying to implement there. Stay positive here. Well, we got about a minute and five seconds left until we kick off the second half. With that, we'll be right back after the break. Again, 51 nothing when we kick it off. Trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's truckload kickoff event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we've doubled the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The truckload kickoff event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. When you need to conquer the drifts on your property, get the job done your way. The Western Defender Compact Snowplow. All the professional grade features in just the right size for your mid-sized pickup or SUV. Easy to attach and easy to use. Get the performance to plow like this and finish like this. Western. More jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. And we're back inside of Ankeny Stadium. Once again, John Schaefer Dim, joined by Tim Halber tonight and enjoying a beautiful night here in Ankeny at Northview Middle School. And once the old high school of this town, they since split into two. Jerry Pizzetti, the longtime coach of Ankeny High, moved over with Centennial. And ever since, it's been a great rivalry between the Jags and the Hawks and one that's only going to continue to build. Yes, uh, it, it's a shame they started the first game of the season because it's always such a big barn burner. And then it was so hot that night that we watched them them play. But that was a, that was a one point game. As is, it's indicative of how strong both these schools are here in the city of Ankeny. So they bring a lot of pride. All these players they know each other growing up. They played baseball together. Yep. They've you know hung around the summer stuff like that to see them play against each other. So. It's really is a very fun game to do to, to kick off the season. And we're, we've hit that point now with, since the split where it's been long enough. The kids that are at Centennial, the kids that are in Ankeny, don't know any different. You know, <laughs> you think back to some of those classes that, you know, they're in middle school together. They were looking forward to going to high school together. And all of a sudden, oh, my friend's a north sider. I'm a south sider. And we got a little bit of a, a, of a rivalry going, so a lot of fun now. You certainly see the pride beaming from both uh, fan bases out here tonight. Great crowd for homecoming, great crowd, as I mentioned earlier in the broadcast for Ankeny last week against Johnston. And we're going to kick off the second half here, and as I, knew, I think we've got a new kicker in there as well. Mile Whipple going to be kicking it off for the Jaguars here. As we start our second half, lofts it high in the air, and East having to come up on it just a bit, bouncing it outside. That looks like Hughes having a seam. Let's double check that number on it. It is Hughes with a nice return. He's out to the 30-yard line. 
on that return. That's where East will set up shop for the first drive of the second half. Good starting position for, for East. That's, you know, positive between the outside. Had one tackle to break before he had that wide open sideline. So a uh, good positive return uh, there by East. Holman back out there at quarterback. He's got Rodriguez next to him there in the backfield. That it would be Cruz Rodriguez on his left. He's switching over to his right. We've got trips out left for the Scarlets. And I'd expect a heavy dose of pass play here now. See if they can get Holman more comfortable. He evades the rush, and he's going to keep it himself before picks up about a yard there on the keeper. You like seeing him use his legs there and, and turn a net positive. Yeah, nothing downfield. There's a good snap. Went back there. Nothing open. Took it to the outside. Picked up two yards. Positive yards on first down is going to help him out quite a bit. So second and eight. Manageable picked it up. Split the difference. Get to third and four, third and three. So get something moving on there. So... Um, Nice to see him go back to the running game. Officially a gain of two there for Holman, and he'll once again operate out of the shotgun, and that's about all we see these days. It's kind of rare to see a quarterback under center. That's, I think, what makes Trenton Smith special. He knows how to handle both types of snaps, but Holman, oh, we got a false start there. It would appear on East High. Yeah, so the offensive tackle thought, I'm going to get out there and get on that linebacker right away. <laughs> that's what the play called for. So, yeah, typically we see in high school, spread offense, no tight end. Um, everything is, you know, you know, out of the shotgun. So it's a seems to be the wave of the high school offenses. Unfortunately, I feel like it's carried over into college a bit. You see teams even with you know goal to go on the one, not wanting to sneak it or anything, and or they'll do a QB draw from the four yard line out of a shotgun instead of just getting up under center like Jalen Hurts does these days. Yeah, yeah. I think quarterbacks that don't take the ball into center, when they do, they tend not to have their footwork. You see more often linemen stepping back, stepping on their feet. They don't know which way to, you know, they step back with the right or left, so they're just not comfortable doing it. So sometimes even, yeah, first and goal in the one, see them in shotgun. Third and nine here for the Scarlets now. See if they can convert on the third and long. Cruz in the backfield next to Holman. Holman. He's got pairs of receivers out wide, a bad snap, it's low. He's just going to dive on it again, and he'll lose about seven yards on the bad snap that he could not handle, forcing East to punt once again. Another look at it, just a little worm burner of a pitch back to the quarterback on that snap. Yeah, and all Homer could do is just go back there. And instead of trying to pick it up and run with it, you're giving the ball up there, just dive on it so they can at least punt the ball away. And it looks like, you know, again, you watch the center play there. He's looking to kind of chop after he snaps that and maybe getting ahead of himself, not making sure that ball is delivered cleanly. Christian Villanueva Morales back to punt once again. He took off after bobbling one snap early in this or late in the second quarter. Another nice one. That ball will bounce straight into the hands of Eric Fields, and Fields has some room to work before getting cut down inside the 30. Jags will start their operation here in the third quarter from about the 28. Yeah, Fields feels like a fielder. He had a short hop there like you'd see a shortstop take it. You know, bounced up in his chest, took it. I thought he was going to muff it the way it took it in those odd bounces, but he caught it cleanly off the very first short hop and then um, took it upfield. So great, great field position at the 28. Some would say home field bounce there yeah. for the returner. Definitely like that from Fields and they'll set the ball up at the 27. They mark him down, so first and 10. And we've got another new quarterback in for the Jags. It's Will Morris, the sophomore. He's going to line up with a couple of running backs in the backfield. He's got Gavin Matheny to his right. They're going to hand it off, though, inside. Didn't quite catch the number there. Looked like, though, it was Ferentz Fion. But let's double-check that number really quick. We're diving deep into the lineup card now, and that jersey's tucked up high, so it's hard, hard to get a read on it. And we are going to stay here right now for the injury on the field. I think that handoff actually went to... Nolan Powell, the sophomore, I believe. My apologies. Again, we're tapping into not the two deep, not even maybe the three deep right now, Tim. We're getting some a lot of sophomore action in there. Yeah, great opportunity for sophomores. They tend, it's, it's awful hard for them to see the field. They, you know, they, they have their JV games, they might see some action, but be, uh, being out here in varsity competitions, a lot different. So um, down Lyman there, looks like number 62, uh, for, for East High. 
And what happens is that sometimes you get your foot caught in the pile there, it gets, your, your ankle gets stuck, you know, and the pile moves over because that pile kind of fell backwards. So hopefully he's just got a little bit of you know, a tweak there. He's just going to take it, take it easy, make sure the trainers get out there and, and help him up. Just a sophomore out there. That's Coach Tyler next to him just chatting with the sophomore defensive lineman. That's Marshawn Cochran out, but he hops back up, not putting much on that right foot. It would take off his shoe. And he's going to be helped to the sidelines to a nice round of applause from the Jaguar faithful over here. Yeah, it happens. You get that foot down there, you get a car underneath the pile, and you can't, with the cleats, you can't get it back out there. Then the pile rolls over on you. Yep. And you can turn, turn ankle pretty quickly. And the turf these days, too, I mean, I know it's a hot topic discussion in the NFL, obviously, after the Aaron Rodgers issues and stuff like that. But, you know, there's, there's probably a little bit to be said for how a cleat locks into turf versus how a cleat locks into grass. Right, it's the, the turf doesn't give, you know, it doesn't break away from the cleat like uh, like dirt does. He's got Nolan Powell in the backfield. That would be another sophomore. They're going to run a nice little fake end around, and what a run it is! Jeremiah Bassett once again finds the end zone, and they're in for the score. I think they ran that so well that the ref blew the whistle dead. Because he thought they ran it inside. Yeah, side judge right there. He's tackled in the backfield for a loss. The back judge is going, um, did you call that dead? You know, Nolan Powell sells it so beautifully there. So Are they going to call an inadvertent yeah, whistle? Possible. So they have to replay it, and that's a tough one for Bassett because yeah. that was quite the drawn-up play there. It was. I don't know if we, we could see it because I was. I thought he was he was double. That. If the official is fooled and he calls a whistle because the defense stops playing, yeah, they hear the whistle. So um, it's and better to replay it. But yeah, it was a perfect fake. I, it, I, uh, it was a great run. I mean, it, yeah, they ran it inside to Powell. I think they, everyone bit on it. The only reason I didn't was because I had the binoculars locked and loaded there. But you know, I thought it was a, a great run play. And then Jeremiah Bassett, we'll give we'll give East the benefit of the doubt there because again, you're taught to play through the whistle. You hear the whistle and. Next thing you know, you got a guy running down the sidelines still. Coach Pacetti goes, I wanted to call that all year long. We ran it perfectly, and they had an inadvertent whistle. They'll keep that one in the back pocket, I'm sure. Will Morris there once again out of the shotgun. This time they'll hand it off to Gavin Matheny. He goes and picks up close to a first down. We got a flag at the very end of the play, possibly a late hit out of bounds. And I think they're going to move the chains here as well. Waiting for the signal from the officials. After the play was over, a foul on the defense. After the distance to the goal from the other run. First down. So there's your answer. Yep. Likely a late hit, and so they'll move them inside, I believe, the 15-yard line. Maybe is close to down to the 10. Yeah, they'll go inside to the 8 here. The Jaguars will start first and goal from the 8. No, they're going to take it even, f yes, the eight-yard line or so. And once again, Will Morris, a sophomore quarterback, out of the pistol. He's getting a good rotation of backs in there as well. Nolan Powell back behind him. They ran that great misdirection. They're going to run the same thing again. There goes Bassett, and he's got nothing but daylight in front of him. Tries to trot, trot gently into the end zone. Zio's there, but too little too late. And that's another Bassett touchdown. Yeah, Gardner Biscard, the guard got out there, got a good block out there, creating that, that seam, create the outside lane. So uh, the play does work well. Works well, can run it twice in, what, a three-play span, and it'll do its job. And good to see those young linemen, too, sticking to their assignments. That's always a question mark, right? You put a, a sophomore in, in a game like this, and you, you want to see the fundamentals first. Right. So we'll get... Double check, I believe they've even taken Bendazu out. Yes, they have. So, Mile Whipple up to step in. He delivers the PAT. That'll sneak through the uprights, and it's a 58 to nothing ball game. 542 left in the third quarter. Centennial leading Des Moines. We'll be back after the break. Face it, it's Iowa, and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same-day AC service appointments at the ready. 
We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. And we're back inside of Ankeny Stadium, 58 to nothing, Des Moines East. That last drive for Centennial, just three plays, 27 yards, 3.03 eaten off the clock, but it was Jeremiah Bassett with the touchdown to seal that one up. 58 nothing again, your score here midway, just beyond midway through the third quarter. East with the return, looking for a seam. That'd be Alf Clark once again. Takes it out past the 30, and that's where the Scarlets will try and get operating. They've struggled to get any momentum really offensively tonight, and it's just kind of compounded drive by drive, but looking for some life here. Yeah, once again, they started the running game a little bit. We saw the quarterback pick up two yards, so um, if they can get that running, they had, they had some success to the outside. I don't think you need to go for, for big passes. The middle of the field, once again, it, it's very hard to pass in the middle against this defense. The safeties play up tight. So maybe to look for the one-on-ones on the corners on the outside if they can, they can run up along the numbers there, get some short, quick gains, and see if they can get a first down. Holman in the pistol. Rodriguez behind him. Holman guiding his teammates around right now. Sets, takes the snap a little bit wide, but what a grab and an even better throw. Nice pitch and catch to the outside. That's Bryce Dix with the catch, and that's a pickup of six. Yeah, still looks there on the tackle from the safety position, you know, another new new player there, uh, junior defensive back, picking up his read. But that's there, a little, little out, you know, up there, picked up, you know, good seven yards. Now, get a clean snap, see if you can get a run there, you know, for the Scarlet Knights, if they get some positive yards against this, uh, against this defense. Plenty of different guys getting their hand on the ball tonight for East. Obviously, don't mind spreading it around here if you're Devin Holman. But haven't seen a lot of their star wide receiver, Zio, this evening. He's He's been the electric one all year long for them, and he's a speedster. As Holman drops back, has to roll out to his right. He's under a little bit of duress, but he finds just on cue. There's Zio, a first down catch, gain of five. And they'll have a new set of downs to work with. Yeah, Houston lose on his tackle position, getting flushing Holman on the pocket. They hit a throw on the run. Nice throw on the run for him to get the first down. He didn't go go too far. Once again, having some positive yardage on that first down. So Holman the passer, but still getting that defensive line. New guys coming in, getting some pressure on there, getting off their blocks. And if you're an East fan, you definitely don't like seeing Holman under as much duress as he's been. But he's handled it great. He's got Rodriguez in the backfield next to him once again. They'll take to the air. Drops back, looking for a quick outlet, but nowhere to go. And he's slung down and met by a couple of defenders. And he is injured. Holman is hurt on the play after getting flung into another defender. It was completely unintentional on that play. Just how it worked out. Nice tackle by Cameron Enos on that. But again, as he swung around... He made contact, looked like a little bit of a shoulder maybe to the chin there. Yeah, you get, you get a little dazed, you know, when you hit another player like that. Then, or just getting hit the turf that hard. He got he got wrapped up pretty quickly. So I think there's a good, it's always a precaution for the player's health, make sure they're okay uh, getting up. So it's good to see him get up, take his helmet off, and he's walking off on his own power. He will have to come out for at least one play, and I'd imagine they're going to probably try and run some uh, concussion checks up checks with him just to make sure obviously safety is number one priority and I'm sure coach Tyler doesn't want anything worse to happen to his junior starting quarterback yeah I think the athletic training staffs now they have them on both sides they do a great job my niece is an athletic trainer and she's really in high school very precautious players coming off they don't know what concussions can do but they really want to watch that out for really for player safety they don't want to take players out you know, for no reason, but that's uh, always to best of caution for player health. So in steps Amante Johnson at quarterback for East High. Johnson ha having a hard time with the snap. He just has to dive on it. It was a little out wide there as well. And back in, I see Devin Holman wanting to come back in. He's checking with coach to see if he's good to go. 
And he's getting the signal. We'll see if Coach Tyler lets him come back in or how we play it. Nope, they're going to stick with Amante Johnson for probably the rest of this drive, I'd imagine. Maybe even the rest of the game at this point. I think if you're Coach Tyler, you want to get another young quarterback. Amante's just a sophomore, 5'11", 160. Good size for a quarterback. You want to get him some experience. Yeah, I think it's good to see him, see him getting in here on his, on his third down play. He's got another play to go here, get a clean snap, and see if he's going to throw downfield or even even let him run and get a taste for the you know for game speed out there, see what it takes to, to turn the ball field. Struggles with that snap there and just has to fall on it again. Once Just kind of slips through his fingers. Yeah. And Johnny on the spot there, Kane Brooks, the sophomore, not letting him get even a sniff of getting up and that's going to force another East High punt with a minute 25 left here in the third quarter. Yeah, take him back to the sideline and say, you know, really, he's, he's taking off before he has the ball in his hands. I think he's trying to run the play. That's that inexperience that does to you. You're, you're hyperventilating a little bit. You know, your heart beats up. You know, you want to do something there. You're, you're breathing faster. you got to settle down, catch the ball, then start running the play. So it looks like he's just moving a little bit too fast before the snap comes back in his hands. Christian Villanueva. Morales back to punt, but it is botched and blocked. Going the other way. Yeah, hard to tell who, who went in there as there was. Number 45, Noah Carter. And Centennial will take over at the five yard line. Do you have credit to Noah Carter in there? Aiden Jones is in there as well. And Step is a little high. Just a tough day overall for East. And I think they knew coming in it'd be an uphill battle as is, but when you have some of those small mistakes that just compound. It's yep. going to make it an even longer night for your team. Fog setting in a, a little bit here tonight. and Man, starting to feel more and more like fall. The closer <laughs> the closer we get into October, you love it. It's football weather. I'm smelling some smoke. I don't know if it's someone's you know, fire pit going on, if they got a bonfire going on. There's, a, there's definitely a haze across the stadium. Nothing like a good campfire on a September evening here in Iowa, though. And I think they're going to let the clock run out of the third quarter. And with that, we'll head to break. 58-0, Centennial leads Des Moines East as we approach the fourth quarter after this. Face it, it's Iowa, and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same-day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. It's our September savings event now at Diarmid Automotive Knoxville. Incredible savings on new Chevy Silverado 1500 and Traverse. Save big on new GMC Acadia and Sierra 1500s. Get up to $9,000 off MSRP on new Ram 1500s, plus 2.9% for 72 months. New Jeep Gladiators up to $10,000 off MSRP. And new Grand Cherokee starting at $39,990. It's the September savings event at Diarmid Automotive Knoxville. Ankeny Stadium here, home of both Ankeny Hawks and tonight the Centennial Jags. They start on their five. They'll hand it off to Bassett once again. Jeremiah Bassett gets about a yard, yard and a half on that before being brought down. And that'll operate with a second and goal. Centennial again getting some good experience for these young sophomores, juniors. Bassett just a junior, but when you got Braden Jackson in front of you and Eli Porter... You're just begging for a carry here or there, especially because the number three guy, J.J. Morgan, is another sophomore who's extremely talented. Yeah, I've seen a lot of also, uh, sophomore offensive linemen coming in there getting some good good experience. And we have, blocking. I think we've confirmed, Tim, that's definitely a, a bonfire of sorts adding to the air. It's starting to affect the, the vocal cords a little bit tonight. <laughs> but no, carry up the middle there for the Jags and Let's take a look around the rest of the uh, state right now, or at least some scores that matter to us. Ankeny up on Iowa City West, 28-7 at half. Valley just rolling past Ames, 45-0. A good one, though, uh, out in Johnston. They're up 10-7 on a very good Waukee team, and we know Johnston's a tough squad, too. Yeah, they got the quarterback, they got the, the receivers out there, and they they came in here, you know, 2-1 uh, and one earlier. So that's not a surprise to see them. Um, they're at home at Johnston. 
Handoff going right up the middle. Not quite into the end zone. Brought down at the one. Oh, they're going to give him the touchdown. That is Gavin Matheny with the score for the Jaguars. And that will extend it to a 64-0 lead. Another look at it as they just go right down the pipe. Yeah, Cruz in there. Here on the tackle, get a good guard. Guard tackle there looking at, you know, 67. You know, Owen Lichty, I mentioned him before, got a good block out there, stood his guy up. Created that seam that couldn't crash the hole. Drive it up there for a touchdown. Maya Whipple in to add the PAT and, well, was ready for it until we weren't ready for it. So they're going to stretch him back about five yards and test that leg out a little bit more. <clears throat> I think Will Morris, the 12, I think he's the backup holder as well. So okay. it's, it's always good. You know, you don't think much about the snapper and the holder, but, you know, it's good to give them some game time experience as well. Absolutely. And, you know, I think back to covering Iowa State years ago, you remember the name Blake <laughs> Clark at all. Yeah. Big brother to, you know, star basketball player Caitlin Clark, but he was a Dowling kid. He was a holder for Iowa State and great Great young man out there and certainly uh, earned his right to be a, a major part of that team. Even if you think a holder's not, trust me, a lot of things can go wrong. Yeah, snap is, you know, it's at your shoulder, it's bouncing <laughs> back there, it's skipping, it's wide. But, you know, if you could put it down, and then kickers particularly like to have the laces turned out. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, 65 nothing. Can we sneak a quick break in? We're going to stay right here instead because, well, my producer calls the shots. I do not. As we're smelling the haze, I'm going to go home. My wife's going to like, where have you been? You got smoke? You know, you've, what you been doing? You know, they, Centennial just had a great bonfire, yeah. a victory homecoming <laughs> bonfire, just channeling their inner Rydell High from the good old days there. Yeah. So we're going to get another kickoff here. 65 to nothing, 10.33 left in this one. We'll finish running around that scoreboard as well right now. Waukee Northwest up 43-0 at half on Waterloo West. That kind of tells us a little bit more about that West team out of Waterloo. Southeast Polk just manhandling Sioux City East 48-7 in the third quarter as well. And there's a reason Southeast Polk's a favorite again this year to win a state title. But we got a big return coming your way. That looked like Hughes He's had a good night on the returns, and that one went from going, oh, no, oh, no, to yes, please, keep yeah. going. Yeah, he did a great job there. He, he fumbled it down here, had the five, kept his composure, got to the outside, turned on the Jets. And I think it surprised some of the guys coming down the angle. They turned up the corner there and took it out to the 31-yard the line. So good positive return. See who comes out at quarterback here in this series. It looks like Amante, I think, was back in at quarterback. That would be Amante Johnson. Again, Devin Holman coming out of the game in the last drive with a quick injury. He wanted to come back in a play later, but I think Coach Tyler is going to stick with the sophomore quarterback to finish this one out, get some important reps. They're going to pick it up. That's Rodriguez just picking it up after a botched snap, and he turns it into a net positive, a big positive at that, 11-yard pickup and a first down. Yeah, Cruz Rodriguez, you know, playing linebacker most of the night. You know, he's been on a lot of tackles, been in the backfield. Now he's back there playing tailback. Saw the ball on the ground, picked it up, and just took it and turned it into like a 12-yard gain, so it's been positive a run. Timeout, Des Moines East. Got a timeout on the field for Des Moines East, and we will stick with it. So, I mean, I think this is Coach Tyler saying, all right, guys, we've got a positive to build off of here. Let's let's keep some momentum rolling and maybe chatting with his sophomore quarterback to say, hey, you gotta you got to catch that. you got to handle the snap better because these snaps haven't been a problem. Yeah, settle down and, and I think a uh, – Catch the ball, yeah, that's the positive. So do something with this drive. You got a, a couple good plays out of it here. You got a good kickoff return. You got the ball up here, the 40, get over midfield. Small incremental successes are going to be helpful for this team. They're, they have some film to look at, seeing how the blocking lined up. What did you do well on that play? This is kind of keep replicating the good plays and build on that momentum as they as they go through because, you know, next week it doesn't get – doesn't get much easier for them. You know, they go in and after tonight they play at Urbandale next week, so you want to get things going. Of course, Jags on the other side of it get Dowling next week, so I'm sure Coach Pizzetti happy to get some rest in for his starters in this one because obviously Dowling is never a slouch. No, I think, you know, it's hard to say the top two teams are Southeast Polk, Dowling. We see them a lot over here. You know, Bettendorf by, also is undefeated. They're, they're a big, uh, big player out there in the Mississippi River 
Valley there. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see how this, this plays out. So they are not an easy out. Pleasant Valley, I think, a top five ranked team from the Gazette out in Cedar Rapids. And maybe a little yeah. bit of bias there just from the eastern yeah. side of the state. Trying to keep those teams uh, in the mix. But I, I still, I've said it since I moved back to Des Moines in, in 2014, the CIML is just so loaded every year with talent, top to bottom. You even look at a team like East, a kid like Zio who's very talented and, and certainly has the ability to make plays. But on the other side of it, the Jags, just so many playmakers and then up and down in the, in the conference. Yeah, and I think it's true. Like, you look at these programs like the like Centennial and Ankeny and look at Dowling and that. They have great JV programs. Players are coming up through the system. You know, they know the youth football coming in there. I think, and I, I like seeing a lot of these guys are playing multiple sports. I think that yes. really does give them good balance as they go through. They do complement each other. So it's really built on these guys are playing year round in, in multiple sports. And you got Amante Johnson still in there, handles that snap, looking for a quick swing out, finds his man, nice pitching catch there. Gains a few yards from Bryce Dix on the reception there. Gets about five, four or five yards and another nice little swing pass. Yeah, they, they shoot themselves with, they had a penalty back there, pushed it back, but they're getting a positive yard here, so they're still at the third long, but they're finding some success, little swing patterns out there. Once again, if they're going to pass, I think you know the sideline route's going to be be out there for them if they get it out there. Um, looking for that one on one on the corner. Third and thirteen, ticking under seven thirty left in this game, and that haze even affecting the camera view here a little bit. That smoke, a bad snap. That one's high. Johnson picks it up. He's looking for a place to go, but I think he dumps it off. Oh, he throws it right to a defender, and that's a pick six. Kane Brooks, the sophomore. <laughs> Just gets handed the football and finds the end zone. 71 to nothing. And you will not find an easier touchdown in your career, Mr. Brooks. Yes, he's going to be telling his kids years from now, because, you know, I picked off in a big homecoming game, you know, my sophomore year, took it to the house, you know. But but that's a big rush there. It's one of the mistakes you want to get for a quarterback. It's best just to eat it sometimes, try to make something out of nothing. And usually this turns out bad there. So little miscue by the quarterback trying to trying to find something there that wasn't. Absolutely. And yeah, I don't mind the fight there from Amante Johnson, but that's a young quarterback mistake being a sophomore and something you can learn from. I'm sure, you know, as Coach Tyler sits down in film and says, look, I love, I love you keeping the play alive. Keep doing that. Use your yep. feet there, but maybe just take that sack instead of throwing it away so we can live to fight another down. Right, right. Delay a game or are they not enough players in the field? Delay of game on the offense. So they're going to back him up five yards. You know, they just want to test the young kicker's legs out. They get yeah. Mile Whipple in there. I, I think they're just trying to test his range a tad. Yeah, we're doing field goal practice as well as extra point attempts here. But, yeah, they've replaced all of the the PAT team here. So you got so many guys coming in. It's from the side. It's hard to tell when you're, when you're the replacement player going in. You ever tried to kick a field goal? Yes, I actually kicked in high school. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, but I was, talk about old school, I was a straight-on kicker. You were a toe kicker. Yep, straight-on uh, toe kicker. So, like, once you got to about the 20, then my range is pretty, pretty, okay. pretty scattered. Well, yeah. there you go. I mean, yeah. that's that's the old school. I, I still remember the day J Doug Flutie pulled the drop kick for the Bills late yeah. in his career. And I could never quite get that. that the, the drop kick is a little little different. But I think back then we had you know we still had a. We could use the T, you know, yep. on, on field goals and that. So I, I was a straight on, you know, punch kicker. And I was never a kicker. I tried it for a couple of uh, things on the air a couple times. I hit a 35 yarder with no pressure at North Polk, and that was the peak of my kicking abilities. Yes, and if you don't kick it low enough, <laughs> that line drive and then your linemen don't appreciate it when that yeah. ball comes sailing up into their, their back. <laughs> their mitts, their rears, yeah. yes. Been known to happen. So. <laughs> Jags going to kick it off again. 7-13 left in this one. Uh, this one has gone all Jags way and they'll be celebrating homecoming. I th I'm assuming the dance then would be tomorrow night for them as the kickoff is bobbled. That's Alf Clark on the return and he's weaving his way through. Fumbled and moves forward and Johnny on the spot for the Scarlets. I don't even have a, jer a name for 41 there, or 44. I think it was, I think it was 44. Um, I don't we'll have a name for him, so that's a tough one, but quite the play there for the Scarlets, and it's a good bounce for them. 
opportunistic. Alf Clark bobbles it, bounces forward, and they gain a few more yards out of it. So I think Scarlets will take it. They'll start it at the 29, and we'll see if they can put some points up on the board here in the final 6.30 of tonight's homecoming matchup against Centennial. Of course, Centennial's homecoming, not east this evening. But good night here at Ankeny Stadium as you have another new quarterback in for East High. It looked like that was Rolando Villa, the senior. He's a kicker and wide receiver on the score sheet, but they're going to put him in at, at quarterback and just see kind of what he can do. Nice little handoff there up the middle. Comes the sidelines to pick up a play, so... Just trying to mix it up. I'm sure Coach Tyler is just looking for a little bit of a spark uh, and maybe a little bit of a leader out there, too. This is one of those moments you're looking for a guy to lead the right way, and I've certainly seen Devin Holman put his helmet back on and try and get Coach to let him back in, but I think it's a wise play to let it be his night, and that snap just flies by him. Cruz Rodriguez falls on it. Probably regrets that a little bit, but that's a major loss after a positive gain on first down. It looked like the quarterback was trying to read where the defensive end was coming in, maybe it might have been an RPO. Then as he looked up to do that, the ball came, was snapped. He wasn't quite ready for it, and it's, it snuck by him. So, And he hasn't played a lot, so I think you look at the timing issue between the center and the and a third-string quarterback coming in. So those are tough mistakes to make at, at this stage in the game, and you're, you're giving yards to really an already strong Centennial defense. Absolutely. Play coming back in here for East High. And once again... That is Rolando Villa, the senior. He's commanding the offense now in these final minutes of this game as it ticks under five for East. And the handoff, he looks the wrong way, and that's all right. He's just going to try and keep it and make a play himself. Picks up a few yards, but again, maybe just a little bit of that lack of knowledge of the offense as a quarterback. A lot goes into it. It's not just, hey, handoff left, handoff right, throw the ball. You yep. know, for these kids. Yeah, Cam uh, Cameron Enos, you know, a sophomore linebacker came in there, stretched out the play, got got the open field tackle, so did a good job there. So now brings up, you know, fourth down, and they'll they'll use the punt return team coming in, new returner. That's Brody Prill on the return, as you heard from our PA announcer in the background, and Prill back to receive on this one, as Christian Villanueva Morales is set up to punt it away. Good snap. Punt does get away high, arching. That one's just straight up in the air. It's going to take an east high bounce, though. That should cross over the 50, and that's where the Jags will likely start their final drive of the evening as we go under four minutes to play now in this one. Again, 72 to nothing. Centennial, the clock continues to run out on east high tonight. Centennial just dominating in all facets of this game. Let's go ahead and pull up the final. We're going to call them close to final stats. As I'm sure we'll get more carries, but rushing 183 yards tonight for Centennial. 66 yards passing. They totaled out for 249. A huge night. You know, you get a big night from Eli Porter with 105 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. Jackson adds another 16 on the ground, but he has a touchdown catch tonight. Bassett with two scores on the ground, and, and really that's a compliment to the offensive line. Yeah, they, they, the holes were there. They had, you know, I don't, I don't recall any, you know, yards for loss. You know, then plus, you know, the defense gives you, you know, three touchdowns, so you're definitely good at And they played in the short field quite a bit. The handoff back up the middle to Powell, and Powell will plow ahead just for a couple of yards there, and tick, tick, tick. The clock goes under 320, and this one will be salted away. I think 72 nothing is likely the final here, but a, a great showing tonight from the Jags as they get ready and, and start looking ahead now to Dowling. What do you do to get ready for the Maroons? I'm sure the coaches are looking at film. They got had an eye out for them. I think looking at you rested a lot of your starters tonight. You know, we didn't see any injuries here here happen. I think they'll go back and really look at what does Dowling do do well. What can they do to attack that that good defense and also contain a really powerful running offense that Dowling has uh, put together this year. And again, we hit on it earlier, but Max Snyder being back in that offense is certainly going to add another dynamic element to it as we get another run up the middle uh, by the Jags. I think Snyder's a, a key piece for Trenton Smith, a safety blanket. We didn't see much of Shuddy, and, and I, I'd expect more presence from him next week against Dowling. Yeah, I didn't see him in many pass patterns. He was blocking a lot of the inline blocking, you know, and, and the defense will shade to him, so... When they do that, the other thing is that it opens up the field for Max Snyder to come out there. Then also, you know, Langford's out there as the other wideout. So those, and even Morgan is a receiver. So 
they got a bevy of receivers to throw to, so if you do double cover, you know, over under receiver like Shuddy, it's going to leave a lot of one on ones, and Trenton Smith can pick them out, you know, quite well. He's been a very good a field general out there reading the open coverage. They just have a lot of speed on that first team offense, too, for the Jags, and I think that's one thing that the that Coach Pozzetti does a good job of is creating space for those guys, using them, getting some different exotic looks in the backfield, especially the misdirection, and pushing linebackers' eyes to different places away from the ball sometimes. Yeah, so Tenny does a good job of either linemen, you know, trap blocking, you know, they do some of the jet sweep. We didn't see as much of the jet sweep tonight. They haven't run. They ran a lot of their plays, the running plays, inside the tackles. That means that they're really getting their blocks read. The running game was going that way, so they didn't need to try to bounce something outside. So it tells that, they, that their offensive line was doing a great job of controlling the line of scrimmage throughout the entire night. We got 70 seconds or so left in this game, fourth and two, and I think Centennial just trying to get the first down to run the clock, or the clock will likely run out either way on this one. As they change, if they don't get the first down, it'll be a change of possession, but there is a first down run and then some, and that will end the night for this one. Centennial 72, East 0. About 11, 10 seconds between the play clock and the game clock. That ends up being about seven seconds or so. So one more play, and this one is over. Tim, it's been a fun yeah. night tonight. Yeah, it has. You know, it's always fun to do. I've had back-to-back -back homecoming nights, so it's fun to see the student bodies of, of both schools come out here and, and cheer the team on. Great crowds from both Ankeny High and the Centennial fan base. And obviously, again, Dowling back in this barn next week, taking on Centennial back-to-back -back home games. I'm sure you. I'm sure the Pizzettis appreciate it, but a fun one overall. Once again, 72 to nothing, the final. Centennial gets the win against East and plenty to pick up and, and learn from if you're the East High Scarlets. If you're the Jags, you build on this momentum moving forward. Yeah, 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 yeah it's a good night. I think Centennial had a chance to flex their muscle. Coming out of this, 3-2 and two in the standings. A lot of teams are top 16. Yep. RPIs will come out there. I imagine that uh, they're going to come out probably in the top 10 again, and I think uh, they're affordable. So Dowling has to come here and play really good, probably fairly rested Centennial Jaguar team that's going to be ready to look up knocking off the Maroons. And district play in full swing for everybody now. No more room for errors, too, right. and I think that's a big thing. But I also think that um, Centennial really took the first four games of their season to learn a lot about who they are as a team. Obviously taking that week one loss on the chin and trying to bounce back the way they did with two straight. And then they played Southeast Polk much, much better. Centennial likely should be a 3-1 and one team right now, or 4-1 and one team right now. Yeah, you know, and they could be, but I think that's where you, even a loss you learn, I think they're they're still a playoff-bound team, just a matter of where the seeding is going to go. Just you know, come, out, come out of your healthy. What would you learn tonight? Because you always learn something new for every game. What do you bring in? What wrinkle can we put into our offense? What can we do with our defense? They didn't have to stunt a lot tonight yeah. that we can present to give Dowling some problems. Absolutely, and you know Tom Wilson's going to dial up a fun fun <laughs> defense yeah. and offensive game plan for, for the Centennial team. Again, 72 nothing the final. Some quick stats. The total yardage for Centennial tonight, 261, 195 on the ground, 66 passing. Your leading rusher tonight, Eli Porter, the senior running back, goes off six rushes, 105 uh, yards on that, of course, 63, 64. That came on the first play of the game on his touchdown run. But uber impressed by the three-headed monster that is Eli Porter, Braden Jackson, and J.J. Morgan. Yeah, they, they did a, put on a show. Really made it a lot easier for Trenton Smith. If there was gr true grass out there, he wouldn't have any grass stains. you got to give, obviously, Jeremiah Bassett a shout-out to two touchdowns for that young man tonight. Couple pick sixes on the defensive side. What else could you ask for tonight if you're the Pizzettis? East struggled on the ground. It's minus 17 yards rushing, 49 yards passing. Total for, of 32 tonight. Once again, thanks for joining us on CISN. I'm John Schaefer, Tim Halber on the other side of this, and uh, it was quite the pleasure. John, it was great. Great, great to be in the booth with maybe, you. Maybe yeah. I can talk Paul into taking another hiatus out yeah. of here for the rest of the <laughs> yeah, season yeah, or right. something and holler at him. Yeah. Sounds good. All righty. Have a good one, everyone, and thanks for joining us on CISN. Too. We all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some wings.
That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snacks. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. It's our September savings event now at DeArmond Automotive, Knoxville. Incredible savings on new Chevy Silverado 1500 and Traverse. Save big on new GMC Acadia and Sierra 1500s. Get up to $9,000 off MSRP on new Ram 1500s, plus 2.9% for 72 months. New Jeep Gladiators, up to $10,000 off MSRP. And new Grand Cherokee starting at $39,990. It's the September savings event at DeArmond Automotive, Knoxville. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Western lets your UTV power through the storm. The Impact V-Plow and Impact Straight Blade. With the features the pros demand. Custom tailored for your UTV. And to keep your work top notch, rely on the Tornado UTV Hopper Spreader. Now that's a job well done. Western, more jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Free Godfather's Pizza. Begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today.